All right, hello everybody, it's me, Clock, and we're playing Starry Flowers by Nom Nom Nami. Um, you may recognize that name from when I played Bad End Theater. That was from them. This is a femboy witch visual novel. Okay, okay, I can't believe I'm playing this. Uh, Periwinkle, hello, and welcome to the deliciously romantic tale of my first love. There's just one thing before we begin. I can grant you the power to choose my accessories at various points in the story. I'm being very gracious to offer such a thing, you know. If you use it, you had better make me look as adorable as possible. <clears throat> what does that mean? Excuse me? This little feature has no effect on the story otherwise. It's simply for your entertainment, should you wish for it. Would you like to enable the dress-up feature? Sure? Then without further ado, let's get ready for my first date with Pastille. <laughs> Wait, I'm actually... I'm actually customizing the sprite. Wait. Cat ears? Hmm. <clears throat> we gotta do cat ears, boys. We gotta do cat ears. Choker. Dark choker. Flowers. Fairy wings. Pretty sparkles. Cat tail. Angel wings. Demon wings. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I lied up the, the title of this game. Sorry. This is going to be a game about a femboy witch cat. Okay. Sorry, a femme cat boy witch. <clears throat> He's basically me, but I'm a clock instead of a witch. <clears throat> Today I met a boy at a candy shop. The moment I saw him, I just knew I couldn't leave without flirting a little. He was so delightfully flustered, which of course only made him that much cuter. When I told him to meet me here, he could only manage to nod in response. So cute. Ah, my favorite type to pursue. Oh no, I'm a chaser. Oh no, oh no, Chad, I'm a chaser. <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> it's already started, chat. Ah, there he is now. <clears throat> That's a short skirt with the thigh high knee. <laughs> what? Hey, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Pastille, you look at you. Here, I thought you looked plenty good in that uniform. My heart was unprepared. S sorry is it too much? I can change. My, but I haven't even fully seen what's under that cloak of yours. It'd be such a waste to change prematurely. Uh, right, forget it then. Besides, it'll be my pleasure to unwrap you later on, my sweet. Uh, uh, now, shall we head to dinner? Uh, okay, lead the way. Wow, we are start- we are starting strong, chat. We're hitting them with the riz. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, I truly didn't expect it. He definitely seemed the type to have a more modest sense of style. Thigh highs with such a short skirt. Even the, even the game knew. Even the game knew was up, chat. Okay, I said it. The game knew too. Was it a dress? I only briefly glimpsed it. I'm quite looking forward to seeing more tonight. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, the restaurant I decided on is one in my usual rotation. Good for a quiet, comfortable evening. For a variety of dates, you must have a variety of locations in mind. Tonight's mood is... Romantic rendezvous. It's a little high-end, though not overtly so. Just enough to make the night feel special. Pastille slides into the booth, following Periwinkle's lead. See, this is what it, this is what you go to the nice restaurants for. Nice, something something good, something nice, you know. Ah, oh, that's good. Something that you know, though. You know the menu, okay? You gotta know the menu because you don't want to show up, order a goddamn burger, and look like a monster, okay? You want to get a nice, you know, a nice steak or a nice, you know, pasta or something, so you don't get food all over your clothes. You don't look like a monster, okay? And then your girlfriend or your boyfriend can get the chicken fingers. They can make a fool of themselves, but you can't, what? okay? Hmm. <clears throat> It's all about first impressions. One hand holds his mantle in place, while the other, the other brushes his bangs aside anxiously. Is this your first time? Huh? Coming here, I mean. What did you think I was asking? Ah, <laughs> no, nothing. I've never been here before. It seems fancy. I'm a fan of the atmosphere. The food isn't bad either. Now let's get a few formalities out of the way, shall we? First and foremost, your pronouns. Oh, um... I just use he, him. What about you? The same. Though, I don't necessarily mind being called by others, especially considering my presentation. <laughs> Understandable. 
Next, expectation. Next, expectations. I consider clarity in this regard to be a key part of ensuring we both enjoy ourselves to the fullest. I do this sort of thing often, you see. As such, I have a couple of ground rules to establish. <clears throat> sure, I'm actually glad you brought it up. Oh? I'm not looking for anything serious. In fact, I kind of prefer when it's just a one-night thing. Mm-hmm. We're on the very same page, then. Um, not that I mind if, you know, we end up wanting to do this again some other time. Alright, well, that's quite likely for me in this case. Certainly, I'm open to that as well. Did you have any other ground rules? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So like a normal date, basically. <laughs> by, the w by the way, chat, just a normal date. Are you nervous? Y yes. You can tell me to stop if you're ever feeling too overwhelmed. That's the other rule. I, um... Hmm? I like feeling overwhelmed, t to an extent. I'd assumed as much, but to hear you admit it outright. Ah, still. In that case, I'll do my best to overwhelm you, my sweet. Ah, ah. Yes, this was shaping up to be a wonderful night indeed. I, honestly, you just... It's perfect. <clears throat> the waiter came to her order. I went first, to give my sweet date a chance to compose himself. With our food ordered, Pastille finally dropped his mantle to reveal... <laughs> my, my. So it was a cute little dress after all. Oh, and here I thought you were saving the surprise for after dinner. Sorry, um, I started feeling awkward with the extra layer. Don't apologize, my only lament is not getting to take it off you myself. I am ex- <laughs> I I'm in a public restaurant, dude. I'm- Jesus, get a room, Perry Periwinkle. What? Dude. I've never heard of a dude so forward. It's because of the cat ears. It's it's the ultra confidence chat. That video you showed me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna lean over and grab him by the chest. Just start making out with him soon. Bruise on inch. You'll save the last few layers for me, won't you? Wink. Mm hmm uh, Excuse me? Pastille? You just agreed. Let's just leave. What, what are we waiting for dinner for? That's all that matters, then. I'm having the time of my life. By the looks of it, so is Pastille. Ah, I'd live to tease cute witch boys. How fortunate that I came across the sweetest one today. A fruit of wine arrives before Pastille is able to recover. Can't even look the waiter in the eye. How adorable. No, I mustn't overindulge before you've even eaten our meal. There'll be plenty of time for after dessert. Pastille takes a few bites of his food before speaking up. So, so Periwinkle, what do you do for a living? Besides tease you until you're barely able to speak? Y yes, besides that. My line of work, then. Hmm, I suppose I can tell you. I'm an aeromagician. I specialize in crafting pleasant scents. Farts in a bo <laughs> Farts in bottle. Here you go. <laughs> Smells like roses. Periwinkle tugs his wand out from his sleep and lightly taps the candle on the table. In a small burst, the atmosphere shifts around the pair. The candle's original aroma is quickly forgotten as it's replaced by something new and cozier. Oh, that is nice. What smell is that? I'm no good at I'm no good at point pinpointing stuff like this. Vanilla. I thought it suited you, although. I'm starting to think this guy is a little more than vanilla, okay? I'm starting to think a more lustful scent might have been a better fit. What what does that even mean? Just that you've done nothing but exceed my expectations. Wink. Uh, I'm not doing anything. Pastille retreats behind his glass of water, overwhelmed by embarrassment once again. <clears throat> I did say I'd go a little easier on him, didn't I? <sighs> He's just too irresistible. Anywho, I bottle and sell scents, like this one. It's fairly lucrative work, once you build a reputation for yourself. Ah, uh, sounds fulfilling. What about you, Pastille? What kind of magic do you specialize in? Oh, I... I had mostly been living without magic until recently. Without magic? I can't imagine. It's not so bad. I mean, humans do it, so why not? I suppose that's true. I very directly make a living off of mine, so I'd find myself in quite a bind if I wasn't able to use it. Not that I mind being bound from time to time, you know. Wink. <laughs> I'm a switch. How did you keep doing that every time I think we're talking about something in innocent? Ah, I just can't help myself, can I? 
Deliberate word choice, my sweet. Would you like me to hold back a little more? N no, it's okay. I was just kind of impressed. You know how to tie yourself up? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely... He's a little... He, they need to get a room, then talk like this, okay? Finish up our meals and decide on sharing a slice of strawberry cheesecake for dessert. Uh, I lost! Chat! Oh! oh. Mm, strawberry cheesecake. Sorry, bros. That's that's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's... Oh, mm. Why don't we even... Uh, dude, just, we should have just gotten the cheesecake. The strawberry... Strawberry New, New York cheesecake? Oh, the graham cracker bottom! Oh, dude, it's so good. Okay. Pastille deliberately leaves the larger bits of strawberries for me. Oh, that's that's wonderful. I wonder, is it because he doesn't like them, or is he just that kind? Either way, this has quickly become my most favorite date of the past few months. Tell me more about yourself, Pastille. I'm afraid the only thing I know is that you work at the renowned Atelier Suites. Oh, um, there's not much else to know. Surely there's plenty more than just that. Any hobbies, perhaps? C cleaning, maybe? Any non-work-related hobbies, dear? Sorry, I never know how to answer these types of questions. My best friend is an alchemist, so I've recently been going on little adventures to help gather ingredients for her craft. Now there's something interesting. Other than that, I honestly don't get out much. I have my hands full of running the store. So diligent. Does that mean this is your first night out in a while? Uh, yeah, I guess it is. I'm honored you were willing to share it with me then. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever, I ever would have tried this place if you hadn't brought me in. So it's been worth it so far. Thanks, Periwinkle. <laughs> that name, though. Damn. It's fitting, but... <laughs> nah, it ain't doing it for me. And just call me Perry at this point. The table had long been cleared, and yet our conversation continued through the night. This place is never too busy, which always leaves me free to linger here without the guilt of taking up any much-needed table space. The longer the date, the more satisfying the finale. That's something I live by. Rushing straight to the climax inevitably gets a bit dull after a while. I want to enjoy this night to its fullest. Innuendos, please? <laughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. Pastille, do you see the witch at the table over there? Hmm? Don't be too obvious now. The one with the tall hat, you see? Uh, y yeah, I see them. I brought them here about two weeks ago. I guess they agreed that it made a nice date spot. Ha <laughs> ha, I, um, I actually... The, the guy sitting across from them? I'm pretty sure I've been with him before. No, surely you're joking, Bastille. Shh, shh, don't say my name out so loudly. Just keep your head low, I'm sure he won't notice. Oh, he's just looked this way. <laughs> ah! Only kidding. P Perry. Ooh, a nickname already. We're moving so fast. You're the one who's been calling me my sweet all night. Well, you are, aren't you? Whose fault is it that you share a name with Candy? Not mine. Still, do you think those two would make a good couple? How should I know? Just imagine the kind of pers person I'd go on a date with and pair them with the other. And what kind of person is that? You, for one. Maybe they wouldn't be so good together. My, am I supposed to take offense to that? Nah, that guy was just kind of pushy. Hmm, <laughs> you're too much, Pastille. <laughs> Alright. I mean, this is pretty forward. I, I I haven't made a single choice. I don't know if there's any choices in the, choices at all in this visual novel. It might be a pure visual novel, just a story to read. With graphics. We eventually made our way out of the restaurant that night. Gotten quite late already. When's the last time I stayed until closing? Honestly, I kind of wish I could have picked the... Like, there's so many Riz and, like, pickup lines and shit... I actually just wish I had options to pick them, because I would have picked them anyways right away. <laughs> it got in quite late already. When's the last time I stayed until closing? This was never a moment of awkward there was never a moment of awkward silence between us. Only Pastille's embarrassed pauses, clear attempts to steer his mind away from debauchery. As we wander back into the night air, he's the first to speak up again. You could have at least let me cover the tip. Nonsense. I'm the one who asked you out tonight. You don't have to cover a thing. In fact, I'd prefer if you didn't cover... Okay, I saw that one coming this time. Y you don't have to say it. Too easy, hmm? <laughs> but really, it's a shame to hide such a cute outfit from the world. I, I don't have the confidence. 
Uh, reminds me of my youth. You get there, my sw oh my god. Oh my god. I'm literally periwinkle. I'm literally cracking old guy jokes and I look like I'm like 21. <laughs> Jesus. <coughs> oh no, oh god. <clears throat> oh, hey Sim. What's up? <laughs> you'll get there, my sweet. One day, you'll be able to toss aside any feelings of inadequacy. Wear all sorts of daring outfits with pride. No, it's not a matter of self-esteem or anything, it's just... If anyone I knew saw me in this, I would die. So that's how it is, hmm? I'm being treated to a more intimate side of this witch boy right now. We walk together under the streetlights until we reach our original meeting place. Would you like me to escort you home? N no that's okay. Then if you don't mind, my place is just down the street. Perhaps you'd like to accompany me? Yes, I mean, I wouldn't want you to have to walk alone in the dark. Such a gentleman. <laughs> nice. Periwinkle expertly slides his hand up and under Pastille's mantle, linking arms as they go along. Chat, you're looking at this femboy witch on the blue one, and you're thinking maybe he's he's a little, like, he's small and fr- No, he knows what he's doing. This is, this is the goddamn pit bull of the, the femboy witch world, okay? Mr. Worldwide, okay? He is dominating femboys. They walk in comfortable silence toward Periwinkle's house. Hmm. Well, this is me. Excuse me, what are you guys doing? C4? Firepower? No one's getting me out of here. Had a most lovely evening. Thank you for accompanying me to dinner tonight. I, I had fun too. Thanks for inviting me out. Pastille fidgets as if he has something to ask, but can't find the words. Pestil. Periwinkle takes a step closer. Y yes He leans in, pausing for any sort of reaction, only for Pastil's lips to come clumsily crashing forward. He's in more of a rush than I thought. Then again, I did spend all night winding him up. Hey yo, so cute. Ah, Pastil, I just remembered. Since we're here, would you like to come in and sample some of my magic? Hey, <laughs> hey, that's that's one way to put that. I mean, hey, would you like to sample some of these magic? <laughs> I can't even say it. Hey, hey, Pastil, I'd like to? Would you like to try some of these magic magic fingers I've got? You know, this magic magic clock. <clears throat> <laughs> I'd like that, yes. Very well then. Both knew from the beginning that he would be staying the night, of course. It's just so much more fun drawing it out like this. Ah, but if that kiss is any indication of things to come, I may have gone a little overboard tonight. If so, we're in for quite a sleepover. Sleepover, dude? No. Yeah, actually, he's gonna sleep on the couch. I'm gonna... Hopefully he doesn't use my lamp as a blanket. Oh, there's a cat! There's a freaking cat up there! Good. <clears throat> I need that. Sorry about the mess, I just haven't found the time to tidy up. Door closes loudly behind them. When Pastil doesn't respond, Periwinkle turns back to face him. Hey, hey, yo, dude, hey, hey, chill, chill, chill? We haven't even gotten on the couch yet, bro. Pastil's back is against the door as he fumbles to untie his mantle. He's breathing a little heavy. He's completely run out of patience, hasn't he? Did I did I download an NSFW version, bro? I did not, right? Then I'm afraid I simply have no choice but to indulge him. Up against the wall. Damn, YouTube, we might be we might be coming back to you. <laughs> hmm. I shouldn't keep you waiting a second longer now, should I? Hmm. Uh, but I still need to change into something a little easier to take off. What? Looking this good comes at a price, you see. I promise I won't keep you waiting. Uh, okay. Periwinkle gives him another peck on the lips and leads him through the cluttered living room to his bedroom door. Excuse me? Chapter 2, Conjured Fragrance. <clears throat> Took me ages to get out of bed that morning. After all, I just couldn't stop thinking about how absolutely adorable Pastille was. Scrambled out of here almost as soon as he woke up, saying he couldn't be late for work. Such a shame. Would have been nice to get one last round in. Hey, my man. I did get a kiss goodbye, though. I think we'll be seeing him again, I think. 
Uh, it's so nice to feel like a housewife for a moment. Hey, no, 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 no. With a dom. With a dom, Periwinkle. Your name's longer. But I should get to work, too. I have an order to fill, don't I? Periwinkle finally rolls out of bed and gets ready for the day. The order in question is for a nearby apothecary. Did you know? Aero magic like mine is actually quite good for you. It's got nothing on actual healing magic, but the calming atmosphere it creates does wonders for one's mood. This particular batch is meant to help with insomnia. I would, I need that. Which is ironic, considering how late I stayed up with the pastille. Whoops, can't be getting distracted now. I really need to finish with up these last few bottles. Periwinkle closes his eyes and draws his wand. Large drops form in its tip, falling into the empty bottle one by one. How are we producing all of this? What kind of liquid that's uh clear are we producing to put in these bottles, chat? <clears throat> <That's... clears throat> Do they know what they're buying? With each drip, the bottle's contents swell. And after only the fifth drop, it's completely filled. Uh -oh. Perfect. Ah, uh, so much easier to finish these with a clear mind. And I have a clear mind now? Hey, yo. Can't help it if a refreshing night out is the only way to regain my focus. Although, I probably could have gotten one of these done last night if I still hadn't been so impatient. No, no. Mustn't let my mind wander too far from work now. Periwinkle fills the remaining bottles, screwing the lids on as he goes. There. Hmm. Now my house is going to smell like lavender. Better head out before I'm lulled to sleep by my own magic. Accessorize. I'm sorry, we have to continue as a cat boy. We just- we have to be a cat boy. It's, it's confirmed, chat. Excuse me? Hey, yo, what? Who just said they need clock juice? You can't juice a clock. That's not how that works, man. <clears throat> It'd be more like syrup, I guess. The apothecary is only a short walk away, but I've never managed to walk in its doors on time. Perhaps that's because it's too- it's so close. I always underestimate the time it takes to reach it. I can hear the owner tapping her foot with impatience as, I so as soon as I open the door. Astragalus. Astragalus. Astra Astragalus. I have that special order ready for you. You're late again, Periwinkle. Lost track of time. You'll forgive me, won't you? You are literally my only provider who has no respect for appointments. That's simply not true. I never miss a date. There's the problem. You were out getting laid again, weren't you? How vulgar. I had a romantic evening with a very cute boy. Who then ended up sleeping over. Well, you had all week to fill the order. Try getting it done in advance next time. Yes, ma'am. Now let's see what you brought. I've worked with Astragalus for a few years now. She's completely immune to my charms. Shocking, to say the least. But it's meant we've been able to remain good friends all this time. Er, um, hmm. Let's see. Astragalus, would you consider us to be good friends? I put up with you. My, but don't you, you don't put up with anyone. You must really like me. You got a favor to ask or something? Is that what you're getting at? No, I was just thinking of how to categorize our relationship. Business associate works just fine, doesn't it? Come now, surely you consider us to be closer than that. I know better than to get involved with you, Periwinkle. Why, whatever do you mean? You're too dazzling. I take that as a compliment. Great. Now will you stop distracting me? I'm trying to count. <laughs> yes, we're definitely good friends. Too dazzling, though. I'm not sure there is such a thing. What would be wrong with it if there was? The point is they're not shining as brightly as one can. Astragalus finishes counting the bottles, sighing in feigned exasperation as she marks them off her checklist. You may always be late, but you deliver quality every time. You're consistent, if nothing else. The waiting is part of the fun. It builds excitement, wouldn't you say? Nope. Just builds frustration for me. But at least you always come through. She unlocks a small drawer behind the counter and takes out an envelope with Periwinkle's name scribbled on it. Here's the rest of your payment. Don't spend it all in one place. Oh, I couldn't if I tried. Really, you're too generous. Astragalus rolls her eyes and begins stok stocking the shelves with her new inventory. <clears throat> I almost had a little Freudian slip there. Uh, two or three orders a month. That's all it takes to support myself. 
entirely through this apothecary. Hard to believe my magic is really worth so much, but who am I to complain? It's certainly a, for a more favorable balance compared to the kind of work I was doing years ago. I mean, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. I do enjoy the freedom, the excessive amount of times I have for partying, for dates. Yeah, and that, on that note, with all that business out of the way, would you like to hear about my date? Would I like to? Not necessarily. Please, Astragalus, as someone with no romance in your own life, the least you could do is live vicariously through mine. The no romance thing is by choice. I listen to your gush for your own damn sake. For my sake? Yeah, I'm afraid you might actually implode if you had no one to talk about this stuff. I'm actually making a noble sacrifice every day that you come in here with new tales of a romantic conquest. Hmm. If you're truly suffering, I shall desist. That's the thing, though. I do like seeing you all worked up over something, even if I don't understand it myself. Ah, so there is a mutual benefit. You'll listen, then? Yeah, at least until I get all this put away. After that, I'm kicking you out for the day. Fair enough. I better be brief, then. He's the cute. He's the absolute cutest thing. Picked him up at a candy shop yesterday. Fluffy pink hair with golden eyes. Naturally rosy cheeks that makes him look as if he's always a little embarrassed by something. He's shy, but not the type that becomes paralyzed in the bedroom. Periwinkle, for the last time, I do not need to hear about bedroom stuff. I wasn't given any details. Although the details are the best part. Nah, nah, never, never tell. So that's that's weird, man. You don't need to go into detail. Tell him I had a good night last night. The winky face, smile. You know, a little bit of a wink, a little bit of a nudge, nudge. That's where you leave it there. You don't need to kiss and tell, okay? This is a safe for work zone only. Break that rule and you're out of here. My apologies, I'll refrain. Anyway, my point is he's extremely cute. Adorable, in fact. Right, so standard fare for you. Need details. I'm sorry, Daniel. Not like that. Not like that. Not like this. Absolutely not. If he was just your average cutie, would I be emphasizing his cuteness so much? I don't meet these people, so it's all the same to me. How can it be? The intensity is so drastically different. Perhaps so intense that I'm having trouble explaining it properly. I'll say, all you've really told me so far is that he's cute and shy. He's kind as well. Save the best part of our dessert for me without even asking. Wow, I would have led with that one. Oh, enough of, oh, enough of your sarcasm. When all my favorite details are off limits, what do you suppose I'm left with? Well, what really matters is that you had a good night, even if it meant you couldn't get here on time like I asked. Uh, I'm already hoping to see him again, to be honest. Oh yeah? Don't hear that from you very often. Really? But I've gone on second dates all the time. This guy got a name? Hmm, I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> I was... <laughs> no, actually, you tell me about everyone you kiss. Come on, if he's really the absolute cutest, it's a shame to keep him anonymous, right? Not like I'm gonna tell anyone anyways. Fine. His name is Pastel. Hmm. <laughs> Even his name's cute. Right? Oh, that reminds me. He sold me some candies that share his name. Would you like to try? Sure. How could a witch turn down free candy? Periwinkle digs into his bag and pulls out one of the pastilles. He hands the candy to Astragalus, who promptly unwraps it and pops it into her mouth. Mm. Oh, these are good! Where did you say this candy shop was from? Not far from here. I'll give you directions. Nice. Shortly after telling Astragalus where to find Atelier Sweets, she unceremoniously kicked me out. She'd long finished putting all those bottles lo away lo after all. With money in my pocket and no more work to be done for the moment, I'm free to begin pursuing my next date. But wherever shall I go? It's a weekday too early for parties, too early for drinks. <laughs> hey man, I know some people who do that every goddamn day. It's concerning. I suppose I could return home and straighten up the place, however. Why would I busy myself with chores when I could be celebrating another order successfully filled? Before Periwinkle can decide on where to go, a familiar witch approaches him. Periwinkle? Oh, Cassia, so lovely to see you. Yeah, yay, I'm so glad we ran into each other. How to describe Cassia? She's exceedingly cuddly. We met at a party one night during which she latched onto my arm and never let go. Quite endearing. Since then, we've gone on little dates from time to time. Oh, we swing both ways. 
She really loves my magic, so I tend to spoil her whenever we're together. Did you need something, my dear? Uh, yes, I checked coming over last night, but you didn't seem to be home. Oh, you came to visit me. I'm flattered. I must have been out to dinner at the time. Sorry that I missed you. Oh, it's okay. I was mostly looking to talk. So, um, if you're available right now, do you want to go to a cafe? That sounds perfect. I'd love to. <clears throat> we take our seats at the nearby cafe. It's a pleasant, sunny little place. I've come here often with all sorts of other witches. Cassia orders her usual hot chocolate with extra marshmallows, while I decide on a simple rose tea. Ooh, Periwinkle, could you make my marshmallows smell like roses too? With pleasure. Periwinkle's wand drops from his sleeve and he gives Cassie's cup a little quick tap. <laughs> Yay, it just smells like, really, it really smells like roses. Just as you asked, dear. It may slightly affect the taste, so let me know if you'd like the spell undone. Cassia dips her spoon in and lifts a marshmallow to her lips, blowing on it lightly before popping into her mouth. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. <laughs> Wow, Cassie, you didn't have to do all that. She truly can find the joy in any little moment. Such a delight. Definitely a contender for the title of absolute cutest wench. Though I would call her absolutely cute rather than the absolute cutest. It takes more than cuteness alone to earn the title of absolute cutest wench. That's where the difference lies, of course. But what am I thinking? How rude is it? To begin ranking my dates in such a way. This is kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie. You wanna see a dude again, but you're going on another date with this chick? That's a little weird, man. Just a little. I mean, I mean, once you kind of commit to somebody, you should commit to them all the way. I must be stuck on the thought from my earlier conversation with Astragalus. What was that sound? Oh, it was just me eating a marshmallow. Don't worry about it. I'm trying to put Pastille's cuteness into words. It really is something special. Uh, it's all in the contrast, his polite, well-mannered, and proper exterior, concealing such intense desire, begging you to make the first move, then going ahead and taking it on his own as soon as you... Enough of that. Someone else in front of me right now, isn't there? Cassie continue happily, continues happily sipping her hot chocolate before speaking up again. Uh, I've missed you, Periwinkle. I've been so busy with packing, I haven't had a chance to see you at all. Packing? Just where are you headed off to? Oh, that's right. I never had a chance to tell you. I'm finally moving in with my partners. In two more days, the three of us will all be sleeping in the same bed. Oh, that sounds cozy. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I've looked forward to it for so long. Sounds like you're about to enter a lovely domestic life. You deserve it. Oh, <laughs> I'm really happy. But um, speaking of my partners, you've still never even met them. True, but I can imagine they're wonderful. Just from how you've talked about them. Ayo, hey, she, she, she's Polly, dude. Hey, hey, yo, she's living it up. Right? But, um, what if you didn't have to imagine? That's what I've been wanting to talk to you about. I was hoping we may all be able to go on a group date sometime. Oh? Yeah, because, like, I just think you're so wonderful, Periwinkle. I want them to know you, too. Hey, are we turning this from three to four? Mmm, though it sounds like fun, I'm a bit... Wait, before you say no, they're both very easygoing and so loving and nice, I can promise it won't be overwhelming. That unfortunately isn't where the issue lies, my dear. I, I know you said you didn't want to get involved before, but I just know that we would all get along so well. I'd like to reassure you however I can, but I understand if you still turn me down. Matters of love are so tricky, aren't they? I still recall the first time something like, like this was asked of me. I'd been nervous going in, but I had also never entered a group situation before. I attributed my anxiety solely to that. However, it quickly became clear that I just wasn't suited to it at all. I mean, I mean, if you even if you swing both ways, it can still be like problematic, right? Yeah, I do love to spoil each of my partners, but strictly one at a time. I get that. Perhaps I was left scarred by the breakdown in communication, the passionate fires of a long-established romance. Surely Cassia and her partners are magnificent people, may indeed be fun for a night, but becoming entangled in committed relationships is something I've always avoided from the beginning, isn't it? This is all very sweet of you, but I do have to decline. I'm not moaning again. It's not happening, chat. I didn't moan in the first place, I just ate a marshmallow. Aw, oh, I can't help but feel a little broken hearted. I apologize. Truly, it's nothing personal. Oh, I know. I don't take offense or anything. It's just sad. Now that, I know, now that I'm going to be living with them and knowing you don't want to meet them, 
I think it's best we just break things off. Yes, I agree. As you said, it's for the best. I hope we can still be friends, though. Damn, she just straight up said, I want to bang. <laughs> she just straight up said, I know I'm moving in with two people, but I was hoping you would join so we I could still bang. Like, come on. Let's go. So we could still, you know, do a little funky. Of course. Sure, paths will cross every now and then. Yeah, thank you for always treating me so well, Periwinkle. Mm-hmm. It was my pleasure. Hmm. <clears throat> Clock moan, please. I am begging. Ugh. Chat be wild and even casual relationships can end in breakups like this. This is largely why I tend to prefer one night affairs. Things can just become so messy as needs evolve. As Cassie and I go our separate ways, I can't help but feeling a little blue. Perhaps I'll return home for the day after all. We missed the... Yeah, it's been a while since we played a femboy game, so I guess it makes sense. Periwinkle quickly changes into something more comfortable, dropping his bag unceremoniously onto the couch. I can use an afternoon nap. No more cowboy! Why am I on my cowboy outfit? Yes, that's precisely what I need. I'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go back out on the town. Shoves some blankets aside and collapses onto the couch, and when he does, the contents of his bag spills onto the floor. Ah... Lazily leaning over to gather it up, he notices the candies from before. Was I too hasty in saying I hope to see Pastille again? I suppose I'd forgotten the feeling of not being enough for someone. Usually these things tend to dissipate naturally, without confrontation or notice. So when they don't, it stings. Periwinkle scoops up the candies, dropping all but one of them back into his bag. He settles into place on the couch, nestled in a tangled mess of blankets and cushions, and unwraps his chosen Pastille. It is sweet, though. What a shame that would be if I never got to taste it again. That's right. I can never resist the promise of an entertaining night, no matter what may come down the line. I'm a hopeless hedonist, after all. Nothing to be done about that. Let fate decide, then. If he comes, he comes. <clears throat> and if we never meet again, I can always hold on to the memory of our perfect date. Is this what a one-night stand is like if you, like, before phones were out? Like, before phones were a thing? This is basically what a one-night stand is. Is like, you just never see the person again. Love of your life, and you're like, shit, I forgot to ask for their address so I could stalk them down. Several hours later, there's a knock at the door. And right there on his doorstep, Periwinkle is pleasantly surprised to find... Pastille, I wasn't expecting to see you again so so, so soon. Treating me to another cute new look, no less. Sorry, I, um, I couldn't stop thinking about... I, I mean, I realized last night I never actually got to sample your magic. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink, your magic. The sense you mentioned. Oh, that's right. We were quite preoccupied, hmm? Get the Doom Slayer in here now? <laughs> yes, so that's why I'm here. He finally manages to make eye contact, but quickly averts his gaze once more. Uh, um, were you in bed? Sorry, I shouldn't have come so late. Mm-mm. These things- these aren't even my sexiest pajamas. I didn't say anything about that. But to answer your question, no, I wasn't. But I did take a nap earlier this afternoon. I have otherwise been enjoying a relaxing night in. I'm so very glad I didn't end up going out. I would have missed out on this flustered mess. Uh, haha. <laughs> would- would you like to come in? Pastille nods vigorously in response. It's still a bit of a mess in here. I hope you don't mind. This pass through. I've seen I've seen worse. Worse. I'm having a stroke. Oh, maybe I'll let it spiral further into chaos. Then I'm just so competitive, you know. I'm not sure that's a competition you really want to win. Mm-hmm. Perhaps not. Periwinkle carefully steps over some of his clutter to dig through one of the boxes in the far corner of the room. Ah, here they are, my personal favorites. This row here contains some of the more potent scents, most of them for relaxation, things to calm the nerves. The rest, I just happen to like. Sweet scents like strawberry, banana, bubblegum, mango. I is there a reason you're only naming candy flavors? Hmm, must be a coincidence. Pastille picks out an unlabeled bottle filled with a pale pink liquid. What's this? Ah, watch that. Watch out, that one's an aphrodisiac. Hmm, we'll see about that. 
Bestil locks eyes with Periwinkle as he opens the vial without hesitation. How bold. Oh, it's Peach. Ha, huh. I almost expected it to be overpowering. Bro just straight up was like, I need to get horny. Now. Horny yourself. Now. <laughs> yes, well, the aphrodisiac bit was a lie, but I'm glad you like it. Peaches are great, though. You're really good at this type of magic. I've never done anything like it. Would you like to try it on? Hmm? Oh, no, no, I don't do perfume or cologne or anything like that. You never tried it? Oh. So, would you say you're a perfume virgin, then? I I'm not. Who even says things like that? <clears throat> In my line of work, you'd be surprised. It's probably just you. Hmm? Maybe so. If you're not going to try it, I'll have, to, I'll have it back now, please. I could try. I just don't know how I'm supposed to apply it. May I? What is happening in chat? Apparently they've invited the Doom the Doom guy to fight a banana. I I feel like Doom guy wins that, right? How powerful is a banana? But still nods, handing over the small vial. Periwinkle seals the opening with his fingertip and swiftly tilts the bottle over and back. Here. He lightly rubs a spot on Pastille's neck, engulfing them both in the pleasant scent of his magic. There you go. This, this, these, these perfumes gotta be made with something special. Their, their eyes meet, neither of them daring to be the first to move. Hmm. Maybe the aphrodisiac bit wasn't a lie after all. Pastille breaks the spell, rushing forward with a sudden kiss, and then retreats just as suddenly. Uh, um, sorry, I just... He certainly is impulsive, not that I mind at all. I'm more than happy to go along with your little game, Pastille. Oh no, my own magic is working too well. Guess there's no choice but to have my way with you, my sweet. Oh no. Pastille's half-hearted protests end there. Periwinkle's hands were already upon him would continue to be for the rest of the night. This game goddamn horny, dude. Chapter 3, Missteps. How long is this game? How many chapters is this? Alright. Over the next month or so, we fell into quite an enjoyable pattern. I still would show up at my door, step maybe once or twice a week. Sometimes we'd go out to dinner, but mostly he'd just spend the night. Excuse me? Uh... Though each visit was somehow just as exciting as the last. The details of which I'll choose to keep private for Pastille's sake. That boy's insatiable, I will say that. Inevitably, after seeing someone for long enough, one begins to pick up on their habits. Cute habits, like the way he kisses me on the cheek before rushing off to work in the early morning. The way he runs his hand through his hair when he's thinking really hard about something. Even his knock is a specific one slightly to test the waters, a pause as he gathers his courage, then three firm and evenly spaced. I'm not sure which of these habits he's conscious of, but there's one thing I've decided he must be acting knowingly, which is his habit of leaving one of his personal effects behind with each visit. First a barrette, then an earring, his choker, a bracelet. And then he returns after a few days with an apology, explaining he had, to ju he had just come to pick up whatever he'd left behind. That's so cute, dude. That's <laughs> Oh, I'm just here to pick up Oh, I'm just picking up my my comb. Oh, oh, is your dick out? Oh, well, I mean, I did just come for the comb, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> what the fuck? Sure, Pastel. Keep creating your little excuses to come back here. I'll happily go along with them. Hmm, what fun. I wonder what he'll come looking for this time. Periwinkle gathers up the discarded garments that had been left the, so that had been left strewn across his bedroom, tossing them into a pile to be dealt with later. Couldn't possibly leave his underwear behind, could he? Ayo. Hey, Ayo hey, chat, what? No, that would be impossible to explain. An earring, sure, but there's no way he'd walk out of here like that. Periwinkle hums to himself as he makes the bed, double checking between the sheets while he's at it. Hmm. I'm almost disappointed. It's been so consistent up until now. I suppose he could just be that forgetful. Unable to find anything of pastilles in my bedroom, I decide to spend the rest of the morning cleaning up the place. 
Now, mind you, I never let my house get dirty, only messy. Don't worry about chat, just look at the femboys. Yeah, I guess so. Yep, thanks, Daniel. Thanks, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Leaving garbage or food waste about is about is out of the question. Everything else, though, simply that many things don't make it back to their proper place. Or rather, I can never decide on a proper place for many of my things. Toss them into boxes, shuffle the boxes around the room. Suddenly, they've become unmanageable piles. To truly put everything away, these would all have to be emptied and sorted. A daunting task, to be sure. But it has been a while since my last attempt. May as well put in some effort. But where to begin? I suppose my work supplies have been a little difficult to manage as of late. That's an achievable goal now, isn't it? And practical as well. Periwinkle begins with the box of his favorite perfumes that have been sitting out since one of Pastel's visits. Ah, yes. That aphrodisiac. Hmm. <laughs> that was a fun night. He packs the bottles back into their places and closes the box, sealing them safely inside. This should go... Hmm. Perhaps it would be better to set it higher on the bookshelf. If I just rearrange things a bit, there should be room for everything. As Periwinkle begins setting things aside, a new pile is born, precariously teetering on the back of the couch. <laughs> Places the box just where he wants it and then stacks his various books and knickknacks around it. Just as he's made his way through half of the pile, why did you bonk me? Why did I get bonked in your bonk war chat? You freaking out. You wild in chat. Chill chill out, chat. Before you get that bonk from me. You don't want my bonks, okay? Just he's made his way through half of a pile. A small portion of it topples forward, bouncing safely onto the couch cushions. Ha! Huh. Topple all you want. I was prepared. Hmm? He finally notices Pastille's jacket, which had expertly blended into the blankets and cushions around it. Haha, <laughs> just when I'd finally worked up the energy to clean up around here, what do I find? Yes, this is no mere case of forgetfulness. It was indeed a little game all along. Periwinkle giddily laughs to himself, excited to have been proven right. You've escalated it too far, Pastille. To leave your jacket around behind is just ridiculous. He leaves me no choice. I'll just have to return this myself. Periwinkle abandons what he's doing and skips off to his room to get dressed. Oh, we're... we're just... Do you think we're going to do anything but the Catboy? Like, sorry. It's just the truth, chat. Catboy every single time, okay? <clears throat> we're back. We're back. We're so back, chat. <laughs> I hadn't... <laughs> I hadn't had a chance to return to Atelier Suites since first meeting Pastille. He was the one always showing up on my doorstep, after all. There was no need. It's about time I paid him a visit, yes? I could restock on my favorite candies as well. Oh, I hope we're wearing the coat, right? Upon reaching Atelier Suites, though, I hesitate. Would it be rude to barge in while he's working? I just know I wouldn't be able to resist teasing him. Hmm. As to not become a nuisance, I shall make my presence known from here. Periwinkle boldly approaches the bench directly in front of the candy shop and sits down. All while... All while wearing Pastille's forgotten jacket. And now we wait. A few minutes pass. I can see Pastille through the shop window. He's currently preoccupied with a customer. Luckily, I brought a lunch. A simple peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Will he notice me before I finish it? The customer is walking out now. Ah, our eyes met. Oh, yeah, we are wearing the jacket. Nice. Pestil turns away, pacing a bit. I take another bite of my sandwich, still watching intently. He stops for a moment, in front of the door behind the register, until finally making his way out of the store, broom in hand. But instead of coming over right away, he turns his back to me, sweeping the sidewalk in front of the entrance. Perhaps he has a strict supervisor. Uh, he keeps glancing over his shoulder. Just come over here, you silly boy. His face is quite red. Oh, I'm smiling so hard right now with the foot <laughs> This is, this is the cutest thing ever. What the hell? His face is quite red, so I can say with confidence that I've successfully overwhelmed him once again. I finish my sandwich by the time he approaches. He takes a seat on the opposite end of the bench. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thought you were ignoring me. N no, I was just trying to decide what to do. This is just another Saturday night. Saturday night? Yeah, I get a femboy in every Saturday. I'm not allowed to celebrate Femboy Friday. That's a, that's me and Ginger's day, so it's a Femboy Saturday thing. Is this a bad time to return your jacket? Not the worst time. 
Hmm? Wait, one second, chat. Sorry. Uh, Periwinkle unzips the jacket and shuffles off out of it, casually folding it onto his lap. I found it whilst I was cleaning up the place. Suppose I could have waited for you to return, but since I was in the area... R right. Sorry, it's my fault for leaving it behind in the first place. But still can barely look me in the eye. It doesn't stop him from stealing glances at what I'm wearing. But who could resist that? I wore my cutest dress for this. Something seems a little off, though. He's usually a, bun a bundle of nerves, yes, but this is a bit much. I'll get right to the point, then. Oh, Pastil. Pastil. You know, you don't have to plant excuses just to visit me. I, I wasn't planting anything. I just forgot it on my way out. I find that hard to believe, considering you've forgotten exactly one thing each time you visit. Really, you should be more honest. Sorry. Thank you for returning it. Oh, it's my pleasure. It gave me a good excuse to see your flustered little face again. Periwinkle sets the jacket on the empty space between them and rises to take his leave. But Pastel gently grasps his wrist before he goes. Perry, I'm... Um, sorry I made you think I was ignoring you. <laughs> I was only teasing, my sweet. Still, I can't, um, I'm not ready to be open about who I see outside of work. I like to keep things very discreet. I don't want to have to explain anything to my friends. I die of embarrassment. So that's why. Understood. I'm actually used to being someone's little secret. Yo, my dirty little secret? That's a banger. Hmm, that didn't sound quite right. What I'm trying to say is... I don't mind at all. From now on, I'll just continue to let you come to me. Th thank you. Sorry. I don't know what you keep apologizing for, Pastel. I'll see you around, yes? Pastel nods and finally lets go of his wrist. A misstep. A huge misstep. I should have guessed it from the hints he's given. Just a few things he said here and there. It was, an it was enough to put it together, wasn't it? The most obvious one being that he always comes to me and not the other way around. Our comfortable pattern that I recklessly interrupted. Should have known from previous encounters with closeted individuals. What's supposed to be a fun surprise appearance can turn so quickly into a desperate rally to cling to normalcy. Carefully constructed lies to conceal the piece of yourself that may not be accepted. Whether it's by the individual themselves or by their loved ones. Certainly an unenviable position to find oneself in. Pastel and I had been seeing a lot of each other during the past month. Was this the inevitable breaking point, then? It can only become more complicated from here. Ah, uh, but it was going so perfectly for so long. Perhaps I'm being overdramatic. I haven't grown tired of him at all, which is precisely the problem. Unwilling to return home so soon, I walk in the direction of the apothecary. Astragalus will be able to knock some sense in me. She always does. Ah, uh, he's in love, chat! He's in love! <laughs> ah, that's cute. That's good. Astragalus, are you busy? Ugh, I know that wine. You shifted into dramatic bitch mode. Take pity on me. I'm having a bad day. Alright, you baby. Tell me what happened. Things are slow today, anyhow. Astragalus, listen patiently as I explain the events of the day. I've learned to come straight to her whenever I find myself unable to make a decision. Although she often puts things far too, blunt far too bluntly, I do always end up feeling more grounded after a consolation. So you're upset because you overstepped his bounds? Accidentally. You always leave out key information. <laughs> and now, you think it's over between you two? When you put it like that, I really do sound dramatic. I mean, you are, but you also have a point. If you want to avoid things getting overcomplicated, this is your sign to get out. I gotta say, though, for two guys who aren't in a committed relationship, you sure do sound like you're in one. It's purely casual. I've still been seeing a few others in the midst of this. But all you talk about is Pastil every time you come in here. Ugh, I know, I know. I just wish I hadn't gone to return the jacket. It's supposed to be fun, but now... Yeah, honestly, I think he's being unfair. He shows up to your place whenever he wants, right? Yes, but I don't have anything else going on. He has a respectable job and all. Hmm, sounds like you just have less self-respect. This guy isn't treating you right. Now that's unfair. He simply said he wasn't ready. It doesn't mean... Huh, making excuses now? You really are hung up on him. This is too hilarious to watch. Enough, I... I... 
I simply cannot help help it if he's just the cutest thing. Of course I don't want to stop seeing him. At that moment, a familiar chime sounded, marking a customer's arrival. I turned my head instinctively to see. Periwinkle? OMG, you look so cute today. Why, thank you. I certainly didn't expect to see you here, Jam. Astra Gallus walks into the back room, still laughing at Periwinkle's express <laughs> expense. I've been coming here to buy your magic. Remember when you did a little demo for everyone at that one party? You totally sold me on it back then. Hmm, I've done a few, so I can't recall, but I'm happy to hear it regardless. <laughs> so what are you doing here? On a date or on the job? No date today. I ruined my chance at that. Aw oh, man, what? That's such a bummer. Really never thought I'd hear the day you of all people couldn't get a date though. You date like everyone. It'd be more accurate to say I go on dates with everyone, rather than actually date them. Aw, uh, same diff. You're like the thirst master. <laughs> Wait, actually this- I like that. You're the thirst master. <laughs> nice. Alright, true enough. Nice. Nice. Hey, hey, stop spamming the chat, guys. Stop spamming the chat with horny bonks, okay? Calm down. Calm down with your bonking and your heart hands. What, what flag is that? Asexual pride. Okay, awesome. Well, stop spamming. <laughs> you you want to test me, Pookie? You want to test my power? You want to test my power? You really want to see what will happen? I don't, I don't give a fuck. Uh, same diff. You're like the thirst master. Hmm, she's right. It's not as if pastille is my only option I'm looking for I'm if I'm looking for a good time. Wait, wait, wait. I'm actually the thirst master chat, cuz. <laughs> Delicious water. Quench my thirst chat. Anyways, are you going to Chervil's party tonight? No, this is the first I've heard of it. He's throwing yet another soiree. Soiree? Can't roll my uh, my R's. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't know. I suppose I've been more out of the loop on these things than usual. I haven't bothered with as many parties since. Well, you should come. They're good luck, like in terms of love and romance. I mean, I'm finally dating my best friend thanks to that last one. Ah, uh, Marzipan, wasn't it? You weren't together before that? Uh, I knew everyone thought we were... Uh, so embarrassing. I guess that what matters is we could finally be totally honest with each other, though. Uh, I'm really happy. Well, congratulations. You deserve that happiness. Yeah, so, like, if you ever need relationship advice, I'm your gal. Oh, but I guess you wouldn't, since you don't actually date anyone. Periwinkle hears Esther Gal snorting with laughter in the back room. She's just listening. <laughs> How dare she? I came here to be comforted, not ridiculed. Jam, dear, what, what time did you say that party started? Oh, like a few hours from now, I think? Sorry, I can never remember the time difference between here and the netherworld. No matter, these things tend to go all night, and I prefer to arrive fashionably late. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to return home to freshen up before, before the soiree. Wait one second, chat. Sorry, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do something. Okay, there we go. Sure, see you there. Sorry, back to the game. <laughs> Periwinkle marches home in a huff. <laughs> Astra Gallus thinks I'm lacking in self respect. I'll show her. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the party and find- Yeah, I'm gonna find someone to spoil me tonight. Netherworld parties happen to be perfect venue. Always filled with cute faces I haven't yet encountered. Plenty of incubi as well. They live to please their partners. It's been a while since I've slept with a demon. Looking forward to this now. Alright, all right. I mean, we can't go wrong with the cat. The cat combo. So, a few hours later... Periwinkle arrives at the soiree. Let's see, who looks available? Scanning the room, he spots both Jam and Chervil, happily chatting with other guests. Wait, is the cat girl and the dog girl dating? Wait, is that? 
Chirval himself certainly isn't a bad lay, but I couldn't go stealing the host of the party. Periwinkle begins to gravitate toward the snack table, still scoping the various party goers. Plenty of candidates to choose from, however will I decide? Before he can make up his mind about who to approach, a taller demon slides into the empty space between him to start a conversation. Cardamom. Cardamom. Wow. Lots of cute witches at the soiree, huh? Oh, so it's been decided for me. I'm already being spoiled. I didn't come here for the witches. Ha! <laughs> I'm Cardamom. Periwinkle. Periwinkle. So, this is gonna sound weird, but... Do I know you from somewhere? Your dreams, perhaps? Nah, for real. Something about your face is just so familiar. <laughs> Hello there. I frequent these types of events, so it's likely we've crossed paths at some point. Hmm, that's not it. Would have tried hitting on you if we did. Mm-hmm. Well... You're certainly free to do so now. I'll give it a shot, with your permission. <laughs> this one isn't bad. I do appreciate how straightforward he's being. So, what are you here for, if not the witches? I intended to find someone to spoil me, and Incubi are rumored to be good for exactly that. We are. We are. So the rumors are true. I'm in luck then. Would you have to have any friends with, who would be interested in dancing with a cute little witch like me? Hmm, I could ask around. Or, better idea, you could just settle for me. Hmm, <laughs> I suppose you'll do. I present my hand and Cardamon gives an exaggerated bow. Pulls me in, albeit a little clumsily, with his gigantic demon hands. Always enjoy to be swept up in the arms of a, of a larger man. <laughs> Pulls, okay. My own hand is almost entirely consumed by his... Unlike with pastilles, which fits so... still. Am I still comparing everyone to him? I shake the thought and return to the moment. Oh god, he is a lot bigger than I am, okay. The pair twirls around the dance floor, losing themselves in the music. After a while, Cardamon suddenly speaks up. Oh, I think I just realized where I know you from. Really now? Yeah, you were in the magazine I work for. I'm an editor. We used your photos for an issue a couple years back. Ah, what a coincidence. I did used to do some modeling in the past. And in the past it shall remain. I'm in a different line of work now. Oh, really? That's too bad. I always thought you looked amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, this certainly complicates things. I'd much prefer to have been complete strangers. Unfortunate. Just when I was beginning to enjoy myself. Haha. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I ran into you like this. Maybe it's a sign. A sign? Of what, I dare I ask? That you should come back to modeling. I can get you in our magazine again if you're interested, that is. I appreciate the offer, but I've moved on. Put too much of a strain on my relationship with fashion, among other things. Uh, well, at least take my card, in case you change your mind. No, thank you. I don't see that happening. Oh, come on. You'd be so great. It feels like such a waste of talent. Mm, I'm quickly growing tired of this. Thank you for the dance, but I really should be going now. Huh? Uh, uh, sure. Dude, bro blew it. Bro blew it. This was fun. Perhaps we'll meet again sometime. Uh, game? Game? Okay, there we go. I was worried there for a second. Yeah. Didn't expect to be reminded of my modeling days of all things. Damn. I was a foot model? Nice. I, although this, his excitement was understandable, the way he went about it certainly ruined the mood. I had to admit it, but I got into this night far too unstable to begin with. It was just a small thing to get to me. Also, chat, by the way, if you're ever with a date or someone you're interested and someone tells you no to something and and maybe you do think of pressing it, just just leave it at no. Just leave it at that. You know, maybe, you may, maybe the topic makes them uncomfortable or maybe just, you know, they don't want to talk about it. Just, just stop right there, okay, chat? It's, it's good advice, seriously. Just solid advice, chat. Solid best advice I can give you is hit them with the classic video game knowledge, okay? Hit them with the Scott Pilgrim. Hey, insert name. My name's insert your name. Do you know this obscure Pac-Man fact? That in Japan, he was called Paku Pak. <laughs> and just hit them with the most obscure video game knowledge you can. Instant Riz. Trust me, it works every time. 
I'm not even here on my own terms, am I? This is all to prove a point. That's certainly not in the spirit of her friendly soiree. It's best I just return home and... Periwinkle, wait. Turns his head to find that Cardamon has chased after him, stumbling into the lonely night air. Hey, uh, I, I'm sorry if I said anything to upset you. Upset me? Perish the thought. It's simply that I'm feeling a little off tonight. I realized I may have come here for the wrong reasons. Look, I'm sorry that I suddenly started talking about work. That wasn't why I approached you at all. Came here for a good time, right? Well, a party's definitely the place to find it. Heck, it's what I'm here for, too. So, you're not wrong to come looking for that. It's completely misread the situation, although it is starting to look salvageable from here. Anyway, please forget the, about the matter, st the magazine stuff. It doesn't matter. We were having fun before that, right? Dancing was nice, yes. Uh, I want to do more than just dance with you. Oh, there it is. Now we're getting somewhere. More than dance? And what could that mean? Ha, huh, well, don't make me spell it out. Kiss, perhaps. Sure, and well, you know, whatever else you'd like to do. As an incubus, I live to please. Since you apologized, I may as well. Kissing is a fine start. Cardamon holds on his arms, inviting Periwinkle into a soft embrace. Yo, we're in hell right now, right? So there's no chance, there's no shot that they're just gonna, like, turn the camera and be like, Pastil is watching. Pastil will remember that in the top left. Periwinkle's hands glide up his chest, and he wraps his arms around the demon's neck. Their faces just inches apart, he pauses. Damn these ads! Cock-blocking chat! Ah, uh, I expected him to close the gap. I still would have kissed me. I've grown far too accustomed to that, so I automatically... Shit, this was a mistake. Periwinkle gives him a light peck on the cheek before pulling away. My apologies, I do actually need to get going now. Huh? I shouldn't have led you on. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, don't worry about that. If you don't want to, it's fine. I'm a, a little confused, though. Did I do something wrong? It's not you. You're very nice. Very firm muscles. Ha, huh, thanks. If it were any other night, things would have gone very differently. Please believe me when I say that. Seriously, is all this mysterious talk supposed to make me want you less? I'm sure you'll have great luck with the witches inside. You're very charming. Damn. Well, alright. Get home safe, Periwinkle. Hope to see you again on any other night, like you said. Thank you for keeping me entertained. Farewell. Peace, nerd. Shouldn't have come. What exactly have I proven here tonight? That I'm willing to pursue the first pink-haired boy I come across out of sheer desperation? Yes. I wanted Astro Gallus to be wrong for once. To just admit that I'm hung up on someone else is just... I don't feel like myself at all. Hey, did you know that in the intro of Dying Light 2, if you take too long in the room before the pool, Spike will play a piano version of the song in the title screen of the original game? Damn, I didn't do that! Why didn't you tell me that, Kerm? When I was playing Dying Light 2. Periwinkle arrives home, lazily slipping out of his shoes and dress. He tosses his hat somewhere and collapses onto the couch. Ugh, feeling more miserable than before. I did tell you you ignored it. I did not. I always read chat, 100%. Periwinkle finds himself staring at the front door, half expecting to hear a familiar knock. The state Pastille would find me in if he were to show up tonight. Am I, am I wearing a bra? What are they supporting? I should get in bed. But he doesn't. Instead, he buries his face in the cushions and falls asleep. I'm wearing, pa I'm wearing a padded bra. Chapter 4, Peach Blossoms. Periwinkle bolts awake to the sound of a knock on his door. I'm pretty sure women usually hate wearing bras, from what I've heard. They're not that comfortable. Yeah, I've, I've heard the sentiment from most of the women in my life. Fuck bras. So I don't know if men would really want to do that either. Yeah. I just, I don't know, yeah. Ugh, what time is it? He rises from the couch and lightly trends over to check who might be visiting him so early in the morning. Ah. At first, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. It took several moments to register the fact that Pestil was on my doorstep. Knocking comes again, snapping, at, snapping me out of my stupor. Hmm, <clears throat> one moment, please. Periwinkle gather, gathers up the clothes he'd left on the floor and stuffs them out of sight. Next, he scrambles into the bathroom to check his makeup. Passable, considering the circumstances. Wrapping a blanket around his shoulders in an attempt to look half-decent, he finally opens the door. 
Hi, I took the day off, so I... Sorry, did I wake you up? Yes, yes, I had a late night. Um, come in, come in. I'll be ready in just a moment. Pastel is here. But why is he here? A day off? Not that he has the day off, but he chose to take it and then come here. Let's just put that aside for now. I need to get dressed. Periwinkle scurries back to his bedroom to change while Pastel waits politely by the door. So your day off, hmm? And you chose to visit me? I'm flattered. Well, it's not just a visit. I was hoping to, um, take you on a date. Ooh, a date. Usually we've reserved those for dinner time, haven't we? I, I wanted to make up for yesterday. So if you didn't have any other plans, I was thinking we could just hang out for a while? Sure, I don't mind, but what exactly is there to make up for, my sweet? Y you know, how I told you not to come back to the shop even though you only showed up to do me a favor? He has it completely backwards. Periwinkle pokes his head out from the bedroom to look Pastille in the eye. Au contraire, Pastille. I should be the one to apologize for putting you in such an uncomfortable position. Shouldn't have shown up unannounced. Wasn't my intention to cause you any actual discomfort. N no, I, I don't think I clarified my boundaries from the beginning, so that's not your fault at all. Then it seems everything is fine now. Hmm, perhaps I could get to know those boundaries better during our date then. But why does it sound suggestive when you say that? Periwinkle treats back to his room with a smile. That's the Dom side coming out, boys. This boy has truly caught me off guard. Truly frustrated that the spiral of guilt and confusion I lost myself in yesterday could be resolved so quickly. Ah, that's all it was. I've merely been fixated on my pat, fix, fixating on my mistake. It had nothing to do with Pastille, per se. I just happened to be the one at the center of it, so of course all my attention was unnecessarily directed at him. There's no problem, then. Which means, as usual, I can continue enjoy our date to the fullest extent. Okay. Well, do what I do. Tell me where we're headed. I'll need to know if I'm going to pick something to wear. Oh, um, you haven't had breakfast yet, have you? Let's get something to eat first. Hmm. Actually, could you come in here for a moment? Yes. I thought it might be fun to have you choose what outfit I wear. Uh, um, are you sure? The clean clothes are on that are in that pile, dear. Uh, okay. Um. Pastel begins to sort through the pile of skirts and dresses, and taking extra care to fold the one he sets aside. How about these? Approaches the folding screen and holds the clothes out to the side for Periwinkle to take. Ooh, these are nice picks, but... No underwear? W weren't you already wearing some? So scandalous, Pastel. D didn't know you had it in you. Please, I'll find you a pair! <laughs> I'm only teasing, my sweet. Periwinkle finally walks out, fully dressed. Ready to go? Pastel looks him up and down cautiously. Y you're wearing some, right? Mm, well, we'll just have to find out later tonight, won't we? Hey yo, hey yo, P Perry. Yo, going full commando. Don't worry, Jan. Don't worry. We still have our. We're still gonna have our cat set up. There's no way we can't have our cat set up. What a lovely day for a date. We walk side by side, Pastel with his cans stuffed into oversized pockets. So cute. He's in the perfect position to be cling to, but I must refrain. Daddy would be comfortable with me hanging all over him in broad daylight. Besides, there's no need to jump into such overt affections just yet. When we reach the cafe, Pastel orders us some donuts to share. I wonder what else he has planned. He only mentioned hanging out. Who knows what that could entail? Munching away on our breakfast, I study his face for clues. He really is cute. I remember the choker. He wore it on our first date as well. And that's the same barrette he left behind after one of our sleepovers. Such pointed choice and accessories. Ah, uh, and now all my staring has embarrassed him. You're too easily flustered, my sweet. Oh, you can get rid of that to see actually what he looks like. Wow. Forgive me for staring. I was trying to intuit, intuit what you might have planned for us after this. Oh, um, nothing in particular. Wandering around town is enough for me. I see. Loitering does facilitate conversation quite well. As long as we're out and about, we won't end up, um... What is he going to say it? Y you know... Hmm, <laughs> of course not. I actually like when we get to talk. Uh, I mean, not that we don't when I sleep over, it's just a different kind. True. Sorry, now I feel like I'm talking too much. Not at all, my sweet. I have to say, I'd rather enjoy our chats as well. 
What happened? I stopped paying attention? We're on a date, you know. We're risen it up. It's all good. E even if you can't resist cutting them short once we're behind closed doors. I I'm really sorry. He's simply too much fun. Ah, but this is no time for my casual- my usual teasing. Can't forget what brought us here. This is the perfect opportunity to become more deeply acquainted. I'll learn all about Pastille so that I don't end up crossing the line again. In the interest of defining boundaries, are there any subjects I should avoid bringing up with you? On that note, has there ever been anything I've said that's caused you discomfort in the slightest? Please don't hold back. Hmm, nothing really comes to mind. I mean, I've always felt pretty comfortable around you, so we could probably talk about anything and then be okay. Anything, really. Wow. Surely you must have some sensitive topics you'd like to avoid. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. <laughs> appreciate that. Thanks for the follow, guys. Really, if I missed you, thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it, guys. I guess so, but I wouldn't really be worried talking about them with you. Actually, you might be the most attentive person I've ever met. Maybe that's why I'm not worried at all. This game's kind of long. I did not expect this game to be so long, honestly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm glad to hear that. You certainly piqued my curiosity. What kind of the kinds of sensitive topics, if you don't mind me asking? Like, for example, you never made me feel weird about gender stuff. I certainly hope not. That one's a bit sensitive for me as well. See? That's why it feels okay to talk about with you. I'm, well, not very masculine, so I get mistaken for a girl every now and then. Now that it's something I get mad about or anything, I've always dealt with it ever, ever since I was little. Still, I think it bothers me in particular since I'm, well, you know, I'm intersex. Mmm, right. I want to be recognized as a boy, but I like wearing feminine clothes too. Yes, that's exactly it. I feel the very same. Right? Like, I don't want to be limited to presenting only one way, even if I'm fine with boyish clothes, too. For me, it's simply about looking beautiful. I dress to fit my ideal. It's not a matter of gender, but aesthetic preference. These are the clothes I feel best in. So, you, um, look really good in them, too. Why, thank you, and I must say, your sense of style never fails to impress. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Break gender norms, boys. Be a be as punk rock as possible. Fuck gender norms. Fuck society and what they tell you to wear. That's how I think, at least. Pastel sips his drink while Periwinkle continues. As long as you're wearing clothes, so please, please don't walk around naked, chat. That, that's weird, man. That's just weird. Don't be a streaker, okay? Yeah, I love kilts too, Sim. Rock on to the Scottish. When I was young, I didn't have the confidence to dress so beautifully. Hmm. <laughs> Can you even imagine it? You? Without confidence? No, I'm not sure that's possible. Right? I suppose it was a different person back then. Where I grew up, things were much more black and white. You were either a boy or a girl and you had to dress accordingly. Ah, uh, that sounds harsh. It very much was. I was completely miserable. Perhaps it was, it's because I come from that sort of environment that I wanted to be known. I looked this glamorous as a boy. Not to say that this is any easy for any gender. I only wish for my efforts to be acknowledged. <clears throat> Sorry, I started, like, choking my own, like, words. Tongue-tied. I've been talking for a long time now, YouTube. It's been longer than what you've watched. Haha. <laughs> I think that's just your competitive spirit again. See? You truly understand me. They laugh together. Periwinkle relaxes into his chair and finishes his drink with a big smile on his face. Pastel and I depart from the cafe and make our way down the street. With no destination in mind, the details of our surroundings, things I've never really paid any mind to, make themselves known. Aromas from the bakery, the flower shop, the patissiere, each dis the patisserie, each distinct and enticing, I'm left with a peaceful feeling as we pass each of them by. What'd you say? A, patiss a patissier. Sorry, is that? I Is that how you say that one? No, I don't think that is. That's... No, because a patissier is the person. Yeah. A patissiere is the place. That's... Yeah, I, I thought I, I. Look, I'm blanking. Okay, I. I'm blanking on the on the French. I'm sorry. Fuck French. This is normal behavior. Ghost, I'm so concerned for my chat. They're just they're just making me um concerned. They're just having their own weird argument. I, I don't know what's happening. They're just weird right now. Now this is a fun idea. Send that transform over time, giving you a sense of place. Ah, but I shouldn't be thinking about work while I'm on a date. Turn my attention back to Pastille. With gender thoroughly discussed, the next personal question would have to be, 
Ooh, sexuality. Which type of partner gets you the most hot and bothered? Shh, you can't just shout those words in the middle of a crowd. Oh, who's even listening? I certainly wasn't shouting. Please don't talk about that stuff too loudly. People will start giving us weird looks. Shall I whisper it into your ear then? That's even worse! Hmm. Now who's shouting? Though still glances around, but despite his outburst, Periwinkle was right. No one had turned their way. Sorry, I, I guess it's okay. Feel free to stop me if I'm being too much, yes? There's nothing wrong with being a little too much. Hmm. <laughs> I imagine you'd say so. Returning to the topic at hand. I've been all, with all sorts of partners, I'd say. I can appreciate just about anyone. But I must admit, I prefer witch boys above all others. I, I would also say witch boys. Excuse me? <laughs> oh? Care to elaborate, my sweet? Nope, that's all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> I'll have to tease it out of you later, then. Ah! Uh, ah! <laughs> we follow along the twisting streets of the shopping district, looking in each of the windows as we pass them by. This is my favorite part of town, filled with all the high-end boutiques you could dream of. This is my favorite part of town, okay. Uh, the mannequins from one of them catch my eye, and I light Grandpa's still sleeve to draw his attention. It looks so good in that, don't you think? Really? I don't know if something so extravagant would really suit me. Nonsense, you could pull it off. The accents match your eyes. <laughs> I guess they do. Hmm, but you look great in that one too. Oh, and that one. You're pointing at everything. Yes, well, the alternative would be to say that I'd like to see you in nothing at all. Uh, uh, do you go to clothes shopping often? You'll have such a variety of cute looks. Oh, um, every now and then, but I can't afford the kinds of stuff they sell here. It is rather pricey, but the brands are worth it. I really don't know anything about fashion. I just end up picking whatever stands out to me. As it should be. You're better off not becoming obsessed with these things. It certainly isn't easy on the wallet. I, I'll leave the brand name stuff to you then. Just seeing them is enough for me. Oh, just seeing them? Not stripping them off of me? Ah! Ah! Screams. Yep, that sounds about right. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. What does it have to do? Yep, okay. After a little fashion circuit, we end up near the cafe where we started. So I've certainly worked him up enough to take him home right away, but that would mean cutting our date short. And what a shame that would be. Oh, I'll get a stretch. Oh, chat. Get a stretch. Almost at three hours, so that was a good stretch, actually. A really good one. That would be cutting our date short, and what a shame that would be. Skip ahead of Pastille and twirl around to face him. There's something I'd like to take to you. Huh? Sure. I realize I've seen your workplace, but you haven't seen mine. It's a little apothecary I sell my magic for to for distribution. An apothecary? I thought you sold perfumes. Technically, that's all they are. I don't claim they deliver any lasting health benefits. They're more for healing the mind, anxiety, stress, and any other unpleasant feelings can be lifted away with just the right aromas. It's more effective for some than others, but for those sensitive to such things, it can make quite the difference. Clock. <laughs> I'm saying to play house, okay? I'm saying to make nice, okay, chat? That's what I'm saying. Make nice. Rejoice in the femboy game. Or leave. That's fine, too, if you want. Huh. And now I fear I've bored you with all this uninteresting work chatter. N no, that's not at all. I was just thinking... I use I use the gender-neutral dude and guys, by the way, guys. Um, but also, girls aren't real, so I don't know why I'm even bothering to say that. It's really admirable, admirable, that your magic could be used to help people like that. Admirable. Selling candy, I think, makes people happy, too. Maybe that's what fun's about. Thanks, Kerm. I agree. Not that I'd ever claim our candy is healthy, either. If anything, you might get cavities. <laughs> the witch who owns the apothecary really liked the sample I passed along to her. Perhaps she'll ask you to distribute candies as well. So, so um, my boss would never agree to that. Anyway, I'd be happy to see it. Lead the way. Very well. Follow me. <laughs> Girls aren't real makes me sad. You're telling me. I can't believe I was lied to all my life. God, it sucks! How am I straight? When we enter the apothecary, it looks to be completely empty. 
Aster Gallus usually sits in the back room, consumed in her work, until she hears the chime of a customer entering. If you ask me, she could really use another helper to liven up the place. But I suppose the hustle and bustle of an ever-busy shop would have its own setbacks. Feel free to look around. I'm going to go and greet the owner. Sure. <laughs> what do you mean, Daniel? What do you mean, Daniel? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? I'm straight, I swear. Periwinkle leans over the counter to peek into the back room. Astragalus, you have a customer. Oh, Periwinkle. Didn't expect to see you back so soon. I brought Pastille. We're on a date. Okay. She looks over at Pastille, who waves when he turn notices he's being watched. Astragalus turns back to Periwinkle. I take it you decided not to heed my advice. Hmm? What advice? Why bother coming to me if you're just going to do whatever you want? Well, whatever. Is there a reason you're here? Thought I'd drop by to give you a little update. As you can see, everything is fine now. Sure, very normal of you to suddenly bring one of your dates here. Is it not? I visit you all the time. Yeah, not for stuff like this. Anyway, I wanted you to meet Pastille. Pastille, come over here. Startled by suddenly being called upon, Pastille fumbles the bottle he was holding and it crashes onto the floor. <laughs> oh, he just fucking... Bam! Ah. Uh, hey, you break it, you buy it. S sorry, I, I can fix it. Pastille sweeps the pieces of the bottle into a pile along with the powdered contents. He holds his hands over the pile, now glowing with magic, and the three of them watch as it reassembles perfectly before them. Impressive. He's done it so quickly. There. Good as new. Bring an ear. Uh, um, sure. S sorry. Can't help but feel I put Pastille in yet another uncomfortable situation. Damn. Can't even tell it was ever busted up. This kind of magic your specialty? Not really. I only learned it because I thought it'd come in handy. Huh. Mr. Gallus continues inspecting the bottle and takes it into the back room without saying another word. Wow, I suppose she was impressed too. Is she mad at me? I can't really tell. Looks like you were spared today. That really that spell really saved you. Can't believe I did that. I'm not usually this clumsy, I swear. Oh, but wouldn't it be adorable if you were? Bastille the klutz. No, I'm just gonna go wait outside. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself. I promise you made a better impression than you think. Pastille walks out of the apothecary and I lean against the counter, waiting for Astragalus to re-emerge from the back room. But when she does, it's with a bag full of, well, I'm not quite sure. Hmm, where'd your boyfriend go? You shouldn't call him that. When I ask, what is it you're holding? Busted lamp. I've been meaning to glue it back together myself until I saw the opportunity to save myself the trouble. How offensive. Take it to a repair shop, like everyone else. Nah. Waste of money. You better keep that boy around. He's useful. You've certainly changed your tune. He's cute. I get a good vibe from him. Anyway, bring him back some in sometime so I can get this lamp fixed. Got it? He won't be doing that. Seriously, though. Where I'm from, we were taught that you can tell a lot about a witch from their magic. And his? Very empathetic. Sincere. Compassionate. Well, you aren't wrong, but how can you judge that sort of thing after witnessing one little spell? Ha! Huh. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I don't need your superstitions. I have a date to get back to. <laughs> Alright. Have fun, Periwinkle. Oh, I very much intend to. Mr. Clock, she be mean. No, he is. Now stop being mean. Chill out. One more bonk and you get timed out. For Ten minutes. Boom. No joke. <laughs> now I'm threatening, chat. Smiling to himself, Periwinkle strides confidently out the door to where Pastille is waiting. Hey, um, do I still need to pay for that bottle? She didn't mention it. Phew, I'm glad I could fix it. I was worried it might be expensive. You never told me you were so good with magic. As I recall, you said you had been living without it. Yeah, mostly. I won't get into the reasons why, but I got back into studying it recently. Need to hydrate? True, I actually kind of need them. Oh, never mind. I'm out of water. Okay. Well, that's a big rip. I'm out, chat. I'm out. Astragal certainly thought you were talented. I'm impressed too, of course. Th thanks. <laughs> if only I could use magic to stop myself from being a klutz. Oh, are you embracing that nickname now? N no, please go back to saying my sweet. Ah, uh, if you like that one so much, I suppose I have no choice. I, I, I just meant... 
never mind. Don't call me anything. <laughs> oh, Pastel. We resume our stroll around town. This time it's Pastel who takes the lead. He seems to have some place in mind, but hasn't said as much. Merely takes my hand and leads me up a labyrinth of stairs. Once we reach the top, a gust of wind swoops through the trees overhead, showering us in flower petals. Ah, peach blossoms. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Can't help but think you're trying to tell me something right now. Huh? You know what I just realized, actually, chat? This, this game probably has a category. I've never changed my category on Twitch. Yep, it actually has its own category. Well, my bad. My bad, chat. Oh, and I have water now. Ginger is so nice. Ugh, nice. Water. I'm I'm rejuvenated, chat. Don't you remember? My aphrodisiac was also peach scented. Ah, ah, I wasn't thinking about that. I, I was just trying to think of other places we could go. And this one came to my mind. It's lovely. Very romantic. Straight out of a shoujo manga. Honestly, how does he even know I'm weak to these things? We don't have to stay. We don't have to stay. I mean, we've already walked around so much. It's okay if you want to head back now. N not to do things. I just meant I'm going to stop talking. Pastel. Y yes? You presented me quite the conundrum. If I kiss you now, you'll definitely want to return home with me as soon as possible. But I wasn't done learning all about you. Not ready for our day to end. But, oh, that is a conundrum. Yes, you see, both options are equally appealing. However can I decide? Uh, um, well, it it's still light out. Maybe we could hold back until di after dinner. Or I could have you for dinner. Uh. On the other hand, you bring up a valid point. Holding back is fun in itself. Duck's plan worked. What was Duck's plan? Okay, chat, seriously, you guys gotta stop being weird. You can't... I don't know if you're saying smash to each other, but please, please stop that. Please. Chill out. Take it to DMs at the very least, okay, chat? Because you're just talking with each other. Just take it to DMs. Do you expect me to recover after what you just said? See, this is quite fun. It's decided then. The date continues. I give Pastille a moment to calm himself. We walk up to the railing and look out at the town. You can see Atelier Suites from here and the train station next to it. My house is somewhere in a row of similarly built homes, inconspicuous. Fallen petals litter the bricks at our feet with every little breeze carrying a few more over to the railing to land somewhere unknown. Turn back to Pastel. Tell me about your magic. O okay, what do you want to know? Your specialty, my dear. If you were that good at reconstruction, I imagine it must fall somewhere in that category. Um, not really. I'm actually an astral witch. My, how rare. What exactly does that entail for you? Uh, well, I mostly use it for fire spells, like anyone else. Forgive me, I'm not well versed in magic theory, but doesn't astral magic have something to do with creation? It does, but that stuff is pretty advanced. I haven't been able to find any books explaining how to use it. Just probably for the best, actually. No one should be allowed to go around creating souls spontaneously. What? Is this game actually that? What? Hmm. Pastel rubs the back of his neck, looking off into the distance. He seems so troubled by the subject. I suppose because he had been living without magic, it may feel strange to openly discuss it. An astral witch, though, I wouldn't have guessed. Putting two and two together, one thing makes perfect sense now. So the famous Atelier Sweets Golem was your creation? Haha, <laughs> is he really that famous? I'd expect our sales to be a little bit better if that were the case. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> but yeah, just don't go around telling everyone I didn't know what I was doing when I made her. What an amazing feat, and yet you sound almost ashamed of it. It's not like I regretted or anything. Gumdrop is really great, I just... 
feel bad that she's stuck in a body with so many limitations. Like, she didn't ask to be made that way. I didn't know you could even make golems that felt real emotions, so of course I never considered any of that. Sorry to go off about it. I've just been feeling guilty lately. Kind of a heavy topic. <laughs> he created a person. Damn. No, no. Thank you for telling me. It's as if I discovered a whole new side of you today. I'm grateful to know it. Thanks for listening. I don't get many chances to talk about things like this, so I'm grateful for it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hearing you speak of her, though, I'd love to meet this golem of yours one day. Sure, maybe one day. How still is amazing. I've never met anyone who would downplay their talents this much. I could ask a thousand questions and still only scratch the surface. My, now I'm the insatiable one. How the tables have turned. How the turntables have turned. I can create... No big deal. I can create life as well. Just give me a woman in nine months. Nah, dude. Just raw dog that shit, okay? We decided it's time to move on and descend the stairs from whence we came. Just make life without the woman. Dude. Just do that. Still chatting endlessly and we decide where we'll wander to next. Over dinner, Pastel opens up a little more. Trade anecdotes, listening intently to each other's stories no matter how unremarkable the events told within them. I could never tire of it. I was hooked by his every word. Alas, the hours flew by, and our day together was quickly approaching its end. But now we had the whole night to look forward to. Exactly, women don't exist, bro. You don't got an out. The sun was on its way down as we emerged back onto the street. The atmosphere is so different than it had just been a short while ago. Pastel brushed his bangs aside and asks... Do you want to head back? It's starting to get late. <laughs> You've waited so patiently to be able to say that. It, it's not like you weren't thinking of it too. Let's go through the park. It's a shorter walk. <laughs> what are they? Sure, a after you. Periwinkle extends his hand, which Pastille takes without hesitation. Under cover of darkness, they walk toward and walk toward the park with fingers gently intertwined. Under a cover of darkness? That's a banger song, by the way, okay? Listen to that today. This park, during twilight hours, is nearly always deserted. Tonight was no exception. We had the entire place to ourselves. This way I can cling to Pastille all I want. And on top of that... Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you smiling about? Finally, no one's around. We can talk about all the inappropriate things we want. <laughs> I knew there was something dangerous about taking this shortcut. It's okay then, right? No one will overhear your less vicious, less vicious, no, lascivious, lascivious confessions. I've never said that word. I've never even seen that word before. Lascivious. Mm -hmm. Okay. W what do you want to know? I didn't, look. I didn't say that. Out of turn. Okay, that was the game. Okay, chat. That was the game. I don't know why he said that, but I I did it too. Okay. I was just doing what the game told me to do. Okay, w what do you want to know? Oh, I didn't think you'd actually agree. I don't have anything prepared. <laughs> what, really? How anticlimactic. <laughs> Unless you're dying to tell me how much you'd love being domed. Guys, let's go! Let's go! Periwinkle's the dom. Let's, let's fucking go! See, ch chat, I'm the top. I'm the top. I'm the top. Uh, I'm not gonna say that. And he finishes then. I have experience with all sorts, you know. Th this is too much. I need to sit down. Pastel begins his retreat to a nearby bench. Ah, uh, are you perhaps into fooling around outdoors? That's illegal! <laughs> Only kidding. Unless... <laughs> Periwinkle follows Pastel to the bench and sits down beside him, leaning his head on his shoulder. Mm, your sweatshirt is so warm. Are you upset with me for suggesting such a scandalous idea? No, but if you cling to me too much, I'm worried I might change my mind. <laughs> I wouldn't want to compromise your morals, but I'd also hate to let it go. But still laughs at that, resigned to his fate. The pair sits in uncomfortable and uncomfortable silence for a while, listening only to the sound of the fountain before them. Periwinkle can start to feel himself being lulled to sleep by it, so he tries speaking up again. I don't know what it is about you, Pastel. I talked all day, and yet I don't I still don't feel like it's enough. I uh didn't really expect to be out this late either. It just kind of happened. Hmm. Was this all supposed to be foreplay, wasn't it? Forgive me for putting it so bluntly. Haha, <laughs> um, I guess it was. 
Hi, why are you confused, bro? What's going on? And I will never stop moaning for chat, okay? If a game requires me to moan, I will... Uh, I will do it as much as I can, okay? But still, we can... We have to get back to my place so I can fuck you. You really are being so blunt right now. We have to. It's the entire purpose of foreplay, isn't it? How could you have let it go on this long? Bro's bricked up, bro. What the fuck? We could head back right now? Yes. Um, you're gonna have to stand up first. Everyone's gonna see my dick. In a moment. But trapped in their comfortable position on that bench, Periwinkle is unable to stand in the end. Instead, he falls asleep to the sounds of, fa of the fountain and Pastille's beating heart. Oh, blue bald. Damn. Chapter 5. Stifled emotion. Dude! Dude! How, how long is this going, bro? How, how long is this? Dude, how many chapters are in this game, bro? I, I thought I'd be done by now. Periwinkle wakes up in his bed the next morning alone. Mm. Pastille? No response. No evidence of him either. None of his clothes laying about, no blankets out of place. I'm wearing pajamas, though I don't remember changing into them. Dude, I thought this game was short. In fact, I don't remember coming home at all. <laughs> I We've definitely been playing for more than two hours, right, chat? Did I fall asleep then? Hmm, I vaguely remember being carried, but... He pauses. Then suddenly throws the covers off himself and leaps from bed. He truly isn't here? He changed my clothes. Was I conscious for that? I... I... I fell asleep before we could fuck? That's the fucking... Oh my god, that's the fucking worst. Oh my god. The embarrassment. Oh god, that's just the worst. Nah. Periwinkle paces around his room, desperately running through the events of the previous night. We were on our way here. We stopped to rest, but it was so comfortable that I... I... Th th this is unheard of. This is... This is... This is the first time something like this has ever happened. We had such a nice day together. The perfect date, really. It should have ended with a bang. Literally. Normally it would have. We both very much wanted it to. So how could I have let myself fall asleep like that? No, there's no need to panic. I simply lost track of time. We've been walking around all day. Of course I would be worn out by the end of it. I should have accounted for that. A simple mistake. One that has completely nullified all the tension I had so gradually built up. Had I gotten lost in the performance then? The romantic flourish meant only to heighten the intensity of the passionate night to come? It's roleplay. Pretend. The only thing genuine about it is that lust that it masks. For me to have reached a point of satisfaction before the intended finale would mean... It was just a legitimate romantic date? Periwinkle stops in his tracks. He turns back towards his bed and curls under the covers, wrapping himself up in them. You know, sometimes, chat, sometimes that's better than banging. Sometimes that's better. Have I ever had one of those before? I mean, certainly don't ever expect every day to end in a sexual encounter. Sometimes a partner just isn't ready or something comes up. It isn't that sex was owed. No, it's just that we never even reached the bedroom. That's... That's never happened. The thought sinks in. Periwinkle slowly unwraps himself from his blankets and sips up in, sits up in bed. I'm overreacting. Yes, I'm merely embarrassed that I had to be carried home and tucked into bed. To be taken care of like that. Usually I'm the one who takes care of things. Takes care of things. Now I just feel ridiculous. Something isn't right here. There has to be an explanation. You are a sleeping coward. <laughs> True. I wish I could sleep right now. I'm so tired. It's safe to admit at this point that I am very sensitive to matters that involve Pastille. But where did that begin? It couldn't have started just the other day. Things were relatively normal, though I, I was seeing him quite often, more so than other partners in the past. This has progressed too far beyond casual. What could have caused this? Thinks for a moment before walking out of his bedroom with purposeful strides. He's going to be making coffee. Going immediately to the bookcase, he tosses a few things aside and pulls down the box of his favorite perfumes. He then carefully extracts the bottle li filled with pale pink liquid. You, you must be the culprit. His aphrodisiac, no, love potion. I wanted to see Pastille's reaction when I called it that, an inconsequential little joke. But it's kept coming up. There must be something to it. Could the peach blossoms yesterday have further amplified its effects? Yes, it all makes sense now. Whether it be by my own magic or some kind of chain reaction with Pastille's, I've somehow unintentionally created a scent that invokes romantic obsession in witches. Or we could just be in love. You know, that dude, that's fucked up. Yup, never mind. That's fucked up. That's what Ginger just said. That's fucked up. In love? What the? That's not real. 
There's research to be done. I have to put an end to these artificial in artificially inspired feelings. I I'll create an anti-aphrodisiac then. Something to cancel out its effects. At which point, everything will go back to normal. It's no problem at all. Convinced by his new theory, Periwinkle dresses himself and heads out to find a solution. The grin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cat. Cat. I'm sorry. If you wanted to see anything other than cat, you're at the wrong stream right now. I was gonna say, it's not late for Daniel. It's early. <laughs> I heard I head directly to the potion sh supply shop, just a few blocks away. It's brimming with reference materials, though I usually only come to purchase magic containers, the vials to hold my perfumes. Navigating their shelves of spell manuals and encyclopedias, I find myself somewhat overwhelmed, but soon the shopkeeper comes to my aid. Good afternoon, Periwinkle, and what might you be looking for today? New bottles, a book, or perhaps me? Damn. Damn. Emma Reddy, it's lovely to see you, but I'm strictly here for business. Playing the professional today, I see. Your loss. Few witches have ever come close to my level of flirty energy, but Emma Reddy is one of them. May have fooled around at a party once or twice, but who's to say? As much as their company would be a welcome distraction, I'm afraid removing my self-inflicted curse takes priority. There is some, actually something you can help me with. But first, would you happen to know anything about aphrodisiacs? Ah, uh, aphrodisiacs, magic that sways the heart, stimulates the libido. They do end up being classified as dark magic because of the manipulative aspects, but a few popular spellbooks happen to contain instructions for consensual usage. Is that what you'd be looking for? Yes, or rather assuming those books also contain instructions for cancelling the effects. Hmm, Did something go wrong in the bedroom? You could tell me, nothing to get embarrassed about. No, it's much more complicated than that. Which spellbooks did you say I could find this information in? I'd like to look through them if possible. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Daniel's got an hour and 15 minutes left until his shift is over. Don't worry, chat. You're lying to me, aren't you? You just want to learn these spells to spice things up in the bedroom. Not everything is related to sex, Amoretti. Love, then. No, you aren't the type. Come on, why won't you just tell me? I can't help you if I won't give up any details. All I want to know is whether or not aphrodisiac-induced feelings of romantic love can be nullified. The details aren't important. So it is love. Hmm. <laughs> Why does she insist on wasting my time? A large resounding thud from down the aisle startles both Amoretti and Periwinkle. Per turns to see a much shorter witch standing there fuming. Ugh, if I have to listen to you ignoramuses babble on for another second, I'm going to lose it. There's another customer here. How long have they been listening? First off, stop conflating aphrodisiacs and love potions. They're entirely separate categories. A witch who sells potions, well, I should at least know that much. You sell a whole book about it right here. It's gestures to the thick tome she had slammed on the floor at the beginning of her outburst. So that's the one I was thinking of. You'll find everything you need to know about cancelling your love spell in there, Periwinkle. No, you won't. He won't? Because it's not a freaking love spell to begin with. I find it majorly unlikely someone's been able to pull off a spell like that when I've been trying for literally years. Uh, well, thank you. That certainly answers my question. Since you're familiar with these things, I must ask, if not a love spell, could it have been a side effect of some other type of magic? Ha! A side effect? You think it's so easy it could be tacked on just like that? Placebo effect is more like it, in which case, all you need to do is stop thinking about it and to go away, dumbass. Oh, really? That saves me so much trouble. Thanks for the advice. <clears throat> that shopkeeper would have done her research. <laughs> Damn, just got shown up by the goddamn old lady. Which is angry shouts fade into placated mumbles as she storms out of the shop. You handled that so well. You should work in retail. Oh, so I'm the one that in need of a new career now? After that exchange? Amoretti gives a nervous laugh and steps away to return the spellbook to its proper place. After bidding her farewell, Perry Periwinkle exits the store and begins short walk home. Th that reminds me that Vaseline was intended as a medication for hearts or something. What? Is it actually? I don't know. Vaseline's weird, bros. A placebo. Of course it was just a placebo. Should have thought of that sooner. There was never any cause for alarm. It's just like before. It has nothing to do with Pastille. She just happens to be the one my mind is fixating on. It's precisely as that temperamental little witch said. If I stop thinking about it, the problem will resolve on its own. So, I must take a few days to focus on myself. At least until I can find my way out of this odd state I've ended up in. 
Operation, stop thinking about pastil day, pastil day one. Let's see, the optimal distracting task would be work, of course. Perhaps I could begin with transforming with the transforming aroma I thought of yesterday. Ah, uh, but that idea came about during our date. I should be avoiding any and all memories tied to him at the moment. Hmm, this may be prove more difficult than I anticipated. No matter, I'll just warm up with a nice bergamot, bergamot scent for now. Periwinkle retrieves a few empty vials from his box of perfume supplies and readies his wand. But instead of the bright green drops he expected, what comes out is a familiar pale pink. Peach. <laughs> that isn't right at all. Seals the bottle and moves on to the next. Which, much to his dismay, yields the same result. You got that pink ju- Sorry, that pink- Pink wand juice. Okay. Magic is tied to emotions. You mustn't get frustrated. I have to focus. Deep breaths. It never helps to force it. Just imagine the desired scent and... Tries for a third time. And yet... Peach again? This is a waste of supplies. So much for my attempt at diligence. If I can't conjure other scents, I'll have to find something else to occupy my time. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, housework. I could probably get some chores done around here. One, one second, chat. Okay, what? Well, sorry, nothing could possibly distract me from finishing them today. They are the distraction. And that's right, I still had laundry to put away, didn't I? But 10 seconds, I'm playing, I'm good, I'm good. Periwinkle walks into his bedroom to face the pile of clothes he hadn't folded yet. Whenever I tell myself I'll get to it later, I tend to leave it for days. The single large pile he expected wasn't there, instead it was split in two, with one half already neatly folded. Ah, uh, I don't remember making this much progress. N no but still did, did this, didn't he? When he came to pick me up yesterday? Curses, he's too good. I can't touch this right now. Barry Winkle covers the pile of neatly folded clothes with the rest of the unfolded ones in retaliation. There, one less reminder to worry about. Now I'm gonna to have to think of something else to do. So far my attempts at forgetting about Pastille has been completely futile. It's perfectly fine, no one said it was going to be easy. Ironically, the more you tell yourself not to think of something, the more your mind will be intense, enticed by it. I mustn't let this consume me. I have to find a way to relax. This bath should help me calm my nerves. Later that evening, I'm feeling so refreshed, I could do just about anything. Let's try cooking for myself tonight. Now there's a task that will require my full attention. Periwinkle opens up the fridge for ideas. A pint of milk, a few cups of yogurt, some eggs, whipped cream... There isn't much in the way of meals, is there? This is why I never cook. Ah, uh, but I could try making an omelette. Breakfast for dinner. Oh, what fun. Periwinkle cheerfully reaches for the eggs and pauses. Where's his ears? He takes them off whenever he wears pajamas. Actually, can I cook without magic? He turns to face the stove. This burner. It's the kind you light with a spell. I'm far too nervous my magic is going to come out smelling of peaches again. Periwinkle slams the fridge sl shut. Forget cooking. What was I thinking? I'm not cut out to be a chef. <laughs> Everyone should be able to cook. You don't need to be a chef to cook, okay, chat? Pastille, on the other hand. No, no, no. Thinking of him in this delightfully domestic context is especially banned. No matter how much I want to eat his cooking now, he's obviously the type to be good at it. What is that supposed to mean? Ah, uh, this is depressing. I'm already right back to where I started. Uh, I'll just order takeout. What if he's the takeout driver? What if Pastille comes in as the, knocks on the door? Yeah, I got your pizza. Periwinkle goes to bed that night, utterly incapable of forgetting about Pastille. <laughs> Haters will see you teleport and say he can't afford a ride. Well, I mean, it's true. Operations seriously do not think about that boy day two. I've tried working. I've tried doing chores. I even tried to cook. All miserable failures. That's why today, I'm taking drastic measures, complete escapism. I'm returning to my roots. I'll reread one of my favorite scenes. If nothing else, it should make a nice source of inspiration. Periwinkle pulls out volume one of a certain manga from his bookshelf. Volume one of Berserk. B -b 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 <laughs> Fabric of our love. How many years has it been? Nah, 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 nah. Pull out the Berserk. Come on. Come on. Pull out, pull out issue one of Berserk. Come on. 
Come on. You know it's Berserk. Deluxe Edition. Nice leather back. No? Okay. Alright, no, never mind. The, the little the little girl manga. That's fine too. I get, I'm not a hater. I just I just thought we were gonna read Peak. Dresses were always drawn so beautifully in this series. Still think of them from time to time. It's the story of a girl's who's of a girl who's fallen for a handsome prince. Standard fare for the type of man types of manga I read. I mean personally speaking, not really, okay. Her mother is a talented seamstress who designs all sorts of dazzling gowns for her to wear. When the prince sees her in one, he becomes smitten with her. You know what this is reminding me of? Vinland Saga. Yes. You know, when Thorfinn meets the prince. This is exactly like Vinland Saga. I have no enemies, chat. At first, she's in heaven. This is the prince of her dreams. But she soon wonders if the prince is only attracted to the dresses, the glamour, and not the poor girl underneath. Until the prince reveals. Ah, I shouldn't spoil it. The ending's too sweet. After reminding the cover art for a while, Periwinkle finally opens the book and begins to read. Just as lovely as I remember, such delicate line work. I wouldn't blame that prince for noticing the dresses before the girl. They really are so beautiful. Come to think of it, think of it the way this prince is drawn. His short, fluffy hair, his gentle features, reminds me of... Periwinkle closes the book in a panic. That was dangerous. I can't even risk even thinking his name. Uh, there's even a later chapter where he dressed in man servant's clothing. There are too many parallels. Periwinkle rolls across his bread and slides the book back into its place on the shelf. I'm dying. <laughs> I need a sip of water, sorry. This isn't fair. How can I how can one of my most beloved series be off limits in my time of need? That's why you pull out the berserk, bro. Scans because nobody's like guts. Nobody's as good as guts, okay? Scans through the different title once more before landing on a 12 volume series. I don't remember this one as clearly, but as an all girl story, it should be safe. Periwinkle pulls the new book from his shelf and quietly immerses himself in its fictional world. Hey, yo, I fell asleep. <laughs> Hi, Ivory. Excuse me, chat. All right, simp, you need to calm down, okay? Jesus Christ, keep. Keep it in the pants. Keep it in the D keep it in the DMs. Keep it in the drafts, okay? Nobody needs to know. <laughs> Chat, you need Jesus. Before I knew it, I finished reading all 12 volumes. The whole day had flown right by. I couldn't help but keep turning the pages. The story was so much more than I remembered. The protagonist was nothing to write home about, but her childhood friend? Ah, what a moving character arc. She's very charismatic from the start. The kind of person you think it has it all figured out. We couldn't be more wrong. Over the course of the series, she goes back through so many love interests. Back in the day, I assumed it was because the author couldn't make up their mind. <laughs> but reading it all at once, it must have been planning from the beginning. These doomed relationships are merely self-sabotage, distraction from pursuing her one true love. She never realizes the obvious answer until the very end. What an emotional finale. She finally confesses and the two girls share their first kiss. Ah, the fireworks. Could anything be more romantic? Tears of happiness, finally being honest with herself and her with her best friend. How lovely. The well of loneliness that is her character is per portrayed so flawlessly. She's the most real of them all. Ending the story in any other way would have been an injustice. She deserves the world. Keep the horses in the stables, bro. <laughs> mm, I own this author's follow-up series as well, don't I? Time to get some snacks and start searching for it. I can't resist diving in right away. Yeah, chat. We totally all own every single volume of manga we we bought we read, right? Right, chat. We we definitely would not pirate it, right? Definitely not. <laughs> I've definitely never pirated manga and then bought the physical later on. That's never happened, okay, ever in my life. Operation Escape Reality, Day 3. Periwinkle continued to read. And read. And read. Until he heard a knock at his door. Still, no, that isn't his knock. Oh, wait, I was trying to forget about him. Though I suppose it means I was successful for a while. I even forgot that I was avoiding something to begin with. When he opens the door, Periwinkle is greeted by a small crowd of friends and acquaintances. Himbo Witch. I don't... 
Can can girls be himbos? I don't think that's how that works, right? Because it's bimbo, right? That's because because like that's like calling a girl a femboy. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's fine. That's fine. This, I don't I don't care. I'm just saying that's a little that's a little weird. Because wouldn't that just be bimbo? <laughs> Periwinkle, get dressed. We're hitting the clubs. Wow, the whole cavalry's here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to de decline. Tonight isn't gonna work for me. What? But no one's seen you in ages. You haven't abandoned us for a new scene, have you? Oh, um, nothing like that. Just been a little preoccupied. I'm taking some time to myself at the moment. Nothing wrong with a little self-care, but are you sure you don't want to come out and enjoy the nightlife? Uh, I don't know. I've fallen so far behind in my work. Choosing work over getting laid? Now I know something's up with you, bro. How offensive. I have more going on than just going out and flirting with everyone I meet. Haha, <laughs> of course, of course. I do appreciate the invitation, though. Thank you for thinking of me. Just had to come and make sure you were still alive. Clubs are lonely without you. I'll have to make my grand return some other time, then. Have a lovely evening. Group waves goodbye and disappears into the night. Hmm. It's been a while since I've had to turn them down. Periwinkle leans his back against the door and sighs. I'm definitely not in any stage to go clubbing right now. <laughs> no matter how much it warms my heart to know that I missed, I won't be making the same mistake as the other night. I can't go recklessly diving into the comforting arms of another as long as my mind is still hung up on Pastille. Why, chat, why, why are we upset that we're hung up on Pastille? Did we break up or something? Like, we, we skipped? <laughs> we... We didn't, we didn't sex him one night, and now, now the game's like, you hate him. You must break up. But how long will I remain in this state? Shutting myself away, binge reading comics. These were emergency measures. I can't avoid the outside world forever. In any case, shouldn't Pestil be returning here at some point? From where we left off, I'd have expected him to come knocking as soon as possible. And yet, it's been three full days now, hasn't it? How long could he possibly, abs possibly abstain from my touch? Or something wrong? YouTube, go take a shower, you're stinky. What? Why are people calling YouTube stinky? Shouldn't be thinking about any of this, but I'm beginning to feel annoyed, confused. If he never comes back, I suppose my problem would go away on its own. I hate the thought of that. As things are now, I'd only be haunted by thoughts of what I could have possibly done wrong. What is my plan, then? Continue to ping-pong back and forth between these extreme emotional states? He rubs his eyes in exhaustion. I'll worry about this tomorrow. Periwinkle steps back in his room and tucks himself into bed with his books. But an hour later, another knock comes. This time, the pattern is unmistakable. Pastille is here. Well, well, well. So he's come after all. Despite all my hard work of trying to forget... I've actually been waiting for this moment, haven't I? I don't care what these feelings might mean anymore. I'm tired of fighting them. I just want Pastille. Damn, made me wait three days, bro. Opens the door and sure enough, Pastille is the one he finds standing there. Hi. Why, good evening. What could you have possibly come for at this hour? To, um, pick up where we left off the other night, maybe? It's about time. Come in, come in. Sorry, I meant to come see you again sooner. I had a few things to sort out before I... Hush now. It's not where we left off at all, was it? Huh? Y yeah, I guess not. I'm more interested in how you got me home that night. You see, the last thing I remember is sitting on that bench. Oh, uh, well, I was having a hard time waking you up, so I just ended up carrying you. The whole way by yourself. I mean, having a broom to ride on helped a lot. Periwinkle closes in. We rode it together, then. That was the easiest way, yes. You must have held me so close, so I wouldn't fall. Uh, I did. Putting your hands all over me, hmm. Uh, I didn't feel you up while you were unconscious. Gives him a big kiss. I was only kidding. But you also changed my clothes. Because I thought you'd be more comfortable that way. It was an innocent gesture. I can't believe you saw my bare chest. I've already seen it. Kia! Kia! That was horrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is this game? I mean, I'm not reading smut, but YouTube? 
or Twitch, YouTube? What is, what is this game making me say, dude? That still suddenly lifts him by the waist and hoists him over his shoulders. Still. Wow, please handle me more delicately. When they reach the bed, Pastel falls backwards onto it, taking Periwinkle with him. This is like quite... Did I download the wrong version? They pause there a moment, laughs fading to soft breaths. If you got to turn the light off. Well, well I can't get up now. How can you be so impatient after making me wait for so long? <laughs> oh well. Okay, thank god. Oh my god. Okay, we're good, chat. Chapter 6, The Longing. Oh my god. Um, How many chapters does this game have? Seriously, I, I have to end this soon. I wake to a rustling sound. My bed is empty again, but when I roll over... I wake to a rustling sound. My bed is empty again when I roll over. Pastille's there, standing in front of my closet. I sit up, rubbing the, eye, the sleep from my eyes. He's holding a box. As he lifts it onto the top shelf, its contents shift, its contents shift, making a clattering noise. Utterly confused as to what he's doing, I finally call out to him. Pastille. Sorry, I didn't break anything, I promise. What are you doing in my closet? Huh? You said I could clean up. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> is there anything I won't agree to in my sleep? Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were awake when I asked. I'll, I'll stop. It's fine, I just didn't expect you to wake up you, to you rifling through my things. That, that wasn't really my intention. I just felt like organizing wow. stuff. Wow. Yo, thanks for the follow, Maple Cruffle. That sounds really good, actually. What the fuck? This sounds great. What do people normally do in the morning after? I guess I should have made breakfast? Yeah, probably, bro. Ooh, I want to eat pancakes. Great, I'll make some. Pastel practically bolts from the room to get started on cooking. Hmm. Oh, Pastel. Looking around the room, he did much more than organize my closet. Books I'd been reading were all tucked back in their proper places on the shelf. The, the clothes that had been strewn across the floor or otherwise left hanging in ridiculous places now sat in the hamper waiting to be washed. Even the pile of unfolded laundry I had previously been was now absent, properly folded and placed into the appropriate drawers by Pastel. I don't want to think about that. Drawers by Pastel. In a word, I'm in awe. How long had he been at this? All while I slept. It shouldn't even be possible. I have so much more floor space than I remembered. How did he manage to do that? <laughs> We're not even in our house anymore. He kidnapped us. Periwinkle puts on a fresh pair of pajamas and walks out of the kitchen in a daze. Hey, pancakes are ready. Damn, what the f Okay, pancakes are, pancakes are a quick breakfast, but... Oh, is it too soon to say I love you? <laughs> Please enjoy. <laughs> That's fast. Periwinkle takes a seat on the table and digs in. They're delicious. Perfectly light and fluffy, the optimal amount of syrup and whipped cream. Every bite is so heavenly I could cry. I've never felt so emotional over food. What has this boy done to me? I eat my pancakes like that one image of the rock. I love that one image of like of him like slamming his fists to the table with the fork and knife. It's just a giant stack of giant pancakes. I love that picture of the rock, dude. I was right about him being the culinary type. He eats some chocolate too. I'm pretty sure. I didn't think I would try to. I would get to try his cooking so soon. This is a surprise attack. He even ah, but how did those get here? There, I have to ask. But still, where did you get these strawberries? Oh, I saw you had some jam, so I used a little magic to change its form. Um, is that okay? Maybe I should have asked first. I just remember you like strawberries, so... Uh, no, no, I, we're, I don't want to see that smut. I'm good. That's gross. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's just not something I'm interested in seeing. Is there any limit to how thoughtful one can be? It's more than okay. This is the best breakfast I've ever had. I'm sure you're exaggerating. They're just pancakes. Be careful, my sweet. If you say it like that, I'm going to start asking to cook my every meal. Fine, you got me. They're special gourmet pancakes. I can only whip up every once in a while. Lucky me. Periwinkle finishes his pancakes while Pistil begins washing the dishes. This may just be the most spoiled I've ever felt. Being with Pastel is like getting caught in an endless whirlwind of positive feelings. No wonder I've become obsessed with him. This boy is dangerously kind. After these past few emotionally tumultuous days, I... How could I possibly turn away from his comfort? 
Periwinkle rests his elbows on the table, head tilted into palm as he watches Pestil in his kitchen. Out of curiosity, hmm? Earlier, before I woke up, what made you ask to start cleaning my room? Oh, I noticed it was getting harder to walk around. I think I stepped on some of your clothes when I got carried you in there last night. Sorry. That's nothing to apologize for. It was fun. <laughs> anyway, I felt a little bad about it. So I figured if I'm going to be coming back here so often, I might as well help clean. Ah. I'm not getting ahead of myself, am I? Sorry, I didn't mean... Not at all. Started by the sudden outburst, Pastille stops what he's doing. <laughs> Silly Pastille. You're always welcome here. Ah, uh, well, thank you. Fine. Okay, enough. I'll admit it. Stupidly, desperately, absolutely, ridiculously in love with Pastille. There, I said it. Or at least I'm saying it to myself. I'll accept this. Pastille is incredible. Who wouldn't fall for him? Me. Chat. Me. I need a little bit of spice, okay? I don't want anyone else anymore. I've been poisoned by this perfect boy. The problem now is what we, what to do about it. Put a ring on it. Weird question, but would you want to, um, date you? Yes. Clean the rest of your house together? Huh? No. It'd be more fun than it sounds. If you get bored, we could do something else. Pastille. I just thought if we did it together, you'd get a say in where everything goes so nothing ends up getting lost. Pastille. It's totally fine if you don't want to want me going through your stuff anymore. We really don't have to. But still, it's fine. I think it's a lovely idea. R really? Yes, in fact, I'd appreciate your help. Black tar heroin in your pancakes, Gep? Is that is that what you put in your pancakes? I'm more of a I'm more of a caramel and strawberry or caramel and banana kind of guy, actually, on my pancakes, but alright, to each their own. One thing or another has always come up when I try to clean my on my own. I'm simply useless at it. Weak. Okay, sorry, bro. Then, I'll take the lead. I want to start with these boxes by the couch. Pastille already had a plan for everything, it seemed. His energy was contagious. He was right that it would be fun. It was entertaining even just watching him go. See him dart around the room so energetically, finding the perfect place for every little thing? It truly has a talent for organization. Meanwhile, I mostly played the role of assistant. You asked for my input every now and then, or instruct me to place something he found somewhere across the room. He made little decisions like that so easily. If it were me, I'd get stuck on every one. But he saw everything through effortlessly. It was nothing short of amazing. And so in a, sh in a short few hours, the entire house had become neat and tidy. Okay, I think I'm satisfied. You? Hmm. Don't you think you deserve to be rewarded for all your hard work? Uh, I, I should have seen that co one coming. But no, not right now. I should actually get going. You won't stay? I promise Gumdrop I'll be back for the afternoon shift. She'll start to worry if I don't come back soon. Mmm. I'll save your reward. I'll save your reward for next time, then. Pesto slips on his jacket and shoes. Just before he leaves, he turn turns back to face Periwinkle. By the way, um, I was thinking... Yes? There's some days my friends travel out of town for alchemy stuff. So if you ever wanted to drop by while I'm working on those days, I think that'd be okay. That's um the most I can do right now. Sorry. I'll gladly take you up on that. I'd love to keep you company. Great. Okay, then. Pesto gives him a quick peck on the cheek before saying goodbye and walking out the door. What was that all of a sudden? It's extremely domestic. I can't be imagining things, can I? Said it was okay to come and visit him? That has to mean something, doesn't it? Periwinkle pacing around the room. Now, now, let's not get carried away. Let's overthink, chat. This is a delicate situa situation. Dropping these intense feelings onto him out of nowhere may only serve to scare him off. Neither of us was looking for a committed relationship from the beginning. It was made explicitly clearer early on. And yet, and yet... He isn't playing fair. My heart can't take this. Periwinkle throws himself onto the couch dramatically. I'm pretty sure, I know they, they're drawn chibi, but pretty sure they're like adult adults. Like, probably like my age or older, chat. <laughs> There's no way I'll be able to stop thinking of him now. Even being at home has become a reminder in and of itself. Everything is nice because of him, and now I'm suffering. This is simply too much. There has to be a way for me to safely indulge in these romantic feelings. Things are fine as they are, progressing even. If I just let it run its natural course, then maybe we'll end up uh, what do I want out of this? To be with him forever? Me? I haven't had a single healthy long-term relationship in my entire life. 
Love isn't in the cards for someone like me. That's a little sad. Ugh, I, I can't even recognize myself right now. Ugh, calm down. I'm overreacting again. Nothing has effectively changed just yet. The characters in these games definitely know how to do their taxes. Older than me. Can't keep fighting myself on this. I'm, I'm in love with Pastille. No matter what it entails, that's the reality. Still isn't quite ready for me to meet his friends, which means there isn't any room to advance further at the moment. I have to be patient. At the very least, I hope accepting all this lets my magic return to normal. <sighs> I need a nap. And so, over the next few weeks, Periwinkle would come by Atelier Suites to spend time with Pastille. Cat. Meow. He always stood there so sweetly behind the counter. Then I would waltz in, pretending to be just another customer, browsing the aisles before meandering over to him. Others would stop in every now and again, but there was ample time in which I had him completely to myself. That's when I'd take the opportunity to chat. Hmm, <laughs> this place smells just like you, my sweet. I think it's the other way around. D do I smell like candy or something? Why else do you think I want to eat you up? Ah, uh, please don't say that things like that when there are customers here. Customers? I don't see anyone. Uh, I know, I mean, just in general. <laughs> you don't want to get turned on at work? That That's not allowed. Our exchanges were mostly innocent, unlike other partners I've paid visits to in the past. He's very adamant about not fooling around at work. Not that it ever stopped me from teasing him about it. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Periwinkle watches as Pastille, armed with a rag and a bottle of cl cleaner, sprays down the counter in front of him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think under I just underestimated your love of cleaning. Are you making fun of me? This is my job, you know. Oh, I should have paid you when you were cleaning my house. I'll send you an invoice. I could I pay you in kisses? That's hard to turn down, actually. It's fun seeing him hard at work. The only side of him most people would ever be aware of. They'll never know of the lust bubbling beneath the surface. His nervous, vulnerable laughter when I've said something he wanted to hear. His gentle touch, the way he can take my hand so casually, and it becomes a stuttering mess as soon as I lean over him. His sense of humor, his sincerity, his quirks. His genuine desire to always provide the exact perfect thing to make me smile. No, the depths of Pastille are reserved for me alone. Oh. Welcome to Atelier Suites. Harry Winkle gives a little twirl and winks to Pastille, who's trying his best to stifle his laughter. How was that? Do you think it suits me? Not in the slightest. You're too elegant for a place like this. I can be cute too, can't I? You are, but you're going to need more than that on your resume if you want the job. Are you guys discussing taxes right now? Like, actually talking? What are you doing? <laughs> it's fun seeing him hard at work. It's too many. He means hard. He means rock. He's bricked up. Bro is bricked up under the counter right now. What? You mean I can't get in through nepotism alone? Looks like you already have a successful career in another field. You're overqualified, so I'm going to have to turn you down. Ah, uh, you're right. Besides, if you were my boss, we'd probably have to stop fucking. But Perry! I truly, truly love him. Even the days we'd talk about nothing at all, I wouldn't give up for the world. And the days he would open up to me, even more so. <sighs> Sai can be really frustrating sometimes. She's my best friend. I still care about her, even when she messes up. Mm-hmm. She's lucky to have you. Yeah, she really is. Anyone else would have given up on her by now. For years, she would just lock herself in her lab, making all this candy, bragging about how cool her alchemy is compared to magic. She barely even talked to anyone else. And when she did, it was to berate them over something. Who treats their own customers like that? Who do you think pays for the roofs over our heads? Ah, oh, sorry. I don't want to give you a bad impression of her. She's gotten much better recently. Sounds complicated. At least your patience is paying off, hmm? Yeah, seems like it. At one point, it was kind of up to a coin toss on whether I'd stay or go. Coin toss? How extreme. N not literally. It was more like whether or not she could prove she actually felt empathy. Anyway, turns out she's not a complete monster, so here I am. Sorry, I'm still giving you a bad impression of her, aren't I? You can you can just disregard everything I said. Sai is great. I believe you. She must be if, she, if you put up with her for so much of her. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Treasured every moment I got to spend with Pastille. Even without a label on what exactly our relationship was, I could enjoy myself all the same. Truth, I was only biding my time. But it didn't really feel like that at all. Just being near him was enough. 
One day, he finally asked it, a question I'd been waiting to hear. Do you want to meet my friends? Uh, well, yes, but are you sure? No, but it feels stupid to keep avoiding it. I started worrying it had happened on accident one of these days. I don't think I would survive that, so... We should just go before I change my mind. He's in the uniform, too. Uh, right now? Yes, come on. Nice, finally. This is what I want to see. Embarrassment. <laughs> Pastel takes Periwinkle by the hand and the pair hastily makes their way to Atelier Suites. Slightly out of breath, Pastel stops just before they reach their destination. Okay, give me a minute. After you've rushed all the way here, don't back down now, my sweet. I know, I'm preparing mentally. I've never done this before. I know it'll be fine, I just... Take your time. We'll go in when you're ready. Okay, I think I'm only getting more nervous standing out here thinking about it. Let's just go in. After you. The meeting itself was nothing memorable. Gumdrop was incredibly human for a golem made out of candy. Wait, that's not a golem, that's a person. Syrup was what about uh, about what I expected. Curt, but also warm. For all its buildup, the interaction itself was anticlimactic. Cook exchange of pleasantries before the candy alchemist called her golem back downstairs. It didn't feel real. Had I acted normal, come across as my usual self. It had only just happened, but it's already a blur. I held Pastille's hand in the end. I remember that. He'd been so nervous, I could practically hear his heart beating out of his chest. I hadn't understood just how stressful it would be for him. I felt guilty after having put him through it, although the idea was his to begin with. He decided to go through that for himself or for me. A seemingly mundane interaction that meant so much for more for the both of us. Pastille. Sorry, I'm okay. I feel stupid having made such a big deal of it. Of course it all turned out just fine. It's important to you. We all get worked up over things we care about, don't we? True enough, dude. This was really sweet. Are you including yourself in that? You seem like you always have it together. Oh, am I hiding it that well? <laughs> anyway, um, we can go. How is he going to react when he discovers what a mess I've been? Damn. <laughs> Pastel walks me home and promises to return later tonight. Things will move forward from there, won't they? Or is it too soon? Maybe it's too much for one day. I don't want to add to his stress. Ugh, why is this so difficult? His perception of me could be completely destroyed, tarnished. But that's a risk worth taking, isn't it? I don't think that would happen. I think you're pretty far along. That night, Periwinkle laid on the floor in the middle of his living room and waited. I expected this night to come eventually, and yet, I still don't feel any more prepared for it. Periwinkle idly taps his wand to one of the candles on the table. Still peachy. The curse is not yet lifted. Pastille's knock finally comes, and Periwinkle rises to answer. Oh, it smells nice in here. Is that your magic? You like it. It's my latest specialty. Oh, what a treat. Have you eaten yet? I can make us a special dinner. Oh, what's the occasion? Celebrating the fact that nothing went horribly wrong today, I brought a few things if I could just borrow your stove. By all means. I think you should moan again. Well, that was a little random, Daniel. That was that was a little random. Um, why? Why why should I why should I do that? Why why? Why should I do that? Excuse me? I didn't just uh copy paste that by the way. I again found myself in an excruciatingly domestic situation for watching Pastille prepare a meal in my kitchen. Things were bad. <laughs> Why? Just do it. What is happening? I'm not moaning again for you, chat. None of you. You have to beg for it. There's no way he doesn't realize it, right? We've been acting as a couple for a long time now. It's just that neither of us have bothered to address it. Shouldn't it be properly acknowledged? Pastille chats with me as he cooks, but I'm admittedly distracted by these thoughts. Perhaps putting a name to it would only cause it to unravel. Currently, there's no expectation. We're free to see whoever will else, whoever else we like. Though, it doesn't seem either of us are doing that. Nope. You gotta beg for it. You gotta get on your knees for it, chat. You gotta get on your knees and pray. Pastille approaches the table where Periwinkle sits, holding a plate in each hand. I don't know about God. You have to pray to me. Ta-da! Pasta's ready. Ooh, bon appetit. Nope, it's not happening now. Nope, nope, it's not happening now. Maybe he's already decided for a couple, and I'm just over obsessing over formalities. What does it matter, so long as the two of us are happy? Really, And I really am happy. This cooking tastes wonderful. 
Thank you, Gem. I agree. Perry, you okay? Hmm? Yes. You were being so quiet, I started to worry that I messed up our dinner somehow. No, no, it's delicious. I was just lost in the pasta is all. Forgive me, I didn't mean to worry you. I need to get out of my own head. It still is here right in front of me. I'm too distracted to savor it. Forget my doubts, we'll just have to see where the night takes us. Periwinkle takes his plate to the sink and begins to wash up. Ah, oh, I can take care of that. Nonsense, you just cooked us dinner. It's your turn to relax, my sweet. Are you sure I can't help? I wouldn't mind at all. You can help by bringing me your plate when you're finished. Okay. Pasil does as he's told, then wanders over to the couch. Hey, um, if you have anyone you want to introduce to me, I'd be happy to meet them, return the favor sort of thing. Uh, I know it can be awkward though, so if not, that's okay too. Mm, no, no one comes to mind. Huh? Really? Sure, I know a lot of people, but I couldn't say I'm particularly close with any of them. Except maybe one, but you've already met my business partner. Oh, what, the apothecary, right? Precisely. Hmm? What's with that look? N no nothing. I just don't know what to say now. Hmm. You expected as someone you expected someone as charismatic as me to have all sorts of new people to introduce to introduce you to, huh? I guess so. I'm just surprised. I um really like being around you, so I suspected that to be true for your other friends too. Hmm. I'd say you're probably the closest I've been with someone. Literally speaking. Laugh together, then fall into a comfortable silence. Their heads lean together. Periwinkle nuzzles his face into Pastille's shoulder affectionately. After a few moments, Pastille asks, Do you want to get in bed? <laughs> for sleep or for pleasure? Um, that's up to you. Periwinkle stands and turns around to take Pastille's hands. Come then. Again? Dude, uh, dude just get the... Uh, I want to finish this conversation. Dude, just ask him out. Ask him to be your boyfriend. Leads him into the bedroom, closing the door behind them. When he does, Pastille speaks up again. You know, I'm still finding it hard to believe there's no one else you're close to. Hmm? Two is a reasonable number. You had two friends as well, did you not? Syrup and Gumdrop. Fair point, but counting you makes three. Ah, you have me beat. Perhaps I should try harder to catch up. Periwinkle collapses into bed while Pastille sits down beside him. I think I preferred it, though. Keeping a healthy distance from others. Really? How come? The alternative has been disastrous in my experience. I'm far too intense. Ha, huh, what do you mean by that? Goodness, my best example is the worst one. In my teenage years, there was a boy I would have done anything for. Wanted his approval so badly, wanted to be loved. It's funny, I can't even think of what drew me to him. I suppose he was just a vessel to project onto. An idealized boyfriend. This shortcut to happiness. <laughs> Poor guy. Didn't know what to do with the torrent of feelings I'd been forcing onto him. We were young. Love like that is much too painful, if it can be even be called love. It took some practice to be able to separate the emotions out, to be able to indulge in the romantic and sexual energy I craved, while protecting my fragile heart. This is deep, man. What? <laughs> I did not expect this when I clicked on this cute femboy game. I'm not gonna lie, chat. Uh, that's okay, it's fine. It's all good to talk about this sort of stuff, I guess. But ever since I figured it out, I've gotten to experience all sorts of love through these casual flings. What am I saying? It's perfect for me. The ideal life, really. Don't listen to me, Pastille. Hmm. I don't know if your heart is as fragile as you think. You don't believe me. Despite what it seems, I have the heart of an innocent maiden. <laughs> I don't know about innocent, but... Pastille leans forward and lays his head on Periwinkle's chest. Sounds pretty strong to me. Ah, it's beating harder now. But because you suddenly embraced me, see this is what I mean by fragile. Periwinkle struggles out from under him. The pair sits facing each other on the bed. You know, at first I thought romantic stuff was just a formality for you, but you actually love it, huh? Are you only realizing that now? Haha, <laughs> I guess not. What are you trying to say, Pastille? That's okay for me to love you? That I'll be safe? Then hurry up and kiss me. Okay, sorry to keep you waiting. Pastille closes the distance between them. I'm too weak. The words won't come out. Hey, hey, yo, stop. I, I, hey. A cut, cut to black. As they kiss, Periwinkle becomes more and more entangled in his thoughts. Ah, it hurts. I want to be even closer. Let's himself fall backward, bringing Pastille down with him. A A cut to black. You two, close your eyes. This isn't nearly enough to satisfy me. Just please, don't stop. Periwinkle's heart cried out. His jumbled emotions caught in his throat, manifesting through his hands, clinging desperately to Pastille. I'm just gonna skip that line of dialogue right there. I'm just gonna... Chapter 7, Shooting Stars. 
Okay, another chapter, apparently, dude. <clears throat> the next morning, Periwinkle steps out onto the doorstep with a heavy sigh. If I lay around in bed all day, I'll only feel more miserable. I need to stop avoiding my work. I have to talk to Astragalus. She isn't going to be pleased with me, though. Holding his mantle tightly, he makes his way into the apothecary. When he arrives, Astragalus is preoccupied with arranging some of her merchandise. She turns abruptly at the unexpected sound of the door's chime. Hey! We're not open yet. Huh? Periwinkle? Good morning, Astragalus. I haven't seen you all month. I barely recognized you under that hood. So to come and knock on your damn door if you didn't show your face here soon. You got a huge backlog of orders waiting. I can't take them. My magic is useless. What do you mean, useless? Periwinkle meekly hands over one of his pale pink vials. This is all I can make. It's been this way for ages. Uh, let's see. Astragalus unscrews the top, eyes, and eyes Periwinkle suspiciously before giving it a whiff. Woo, that's powerful. Not bad, though. Warms me right up. Could stand to be diluted a little, just to make it a little less uh, overwhelming. So, what's got you stuck on a scent like this? It's pastel. It's ruined me. I'll never be able to return to the way I was before. I see, so things get complicated just like I warned you. Mm-hmm. Sniffle. I, I love him so much, I think I might die. Come on, back room now. Periwinkle nods and obediently follows Astragalus into her private office. Quietly takes in his surroundings before she suddenly turns to him with a raised finger. Don't touch anything. Huh? Astragalus drags a beanbag chair out from the corner and pops it in the middle of the room unceremoniously. Sit. It's dusty. Ugh, you're such a diva. She gives a good couple smacks, beating the dust in the air instead. Now sit. Very well. Complies, and Astragalus spins her office chair around to face, face him. <laughs> Alright, Periwinkle, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna brew us up some cot tea, and you're gonna explain everything from the beginning. Explain what? About Pestil, even the stuff I already know, everything from the top. Everything. Skip the bedroom details, obviously. Just walk me through anything important that happened since you met. I don't want to. Reliving it all is going to make things worse. Astragalus stands and walks over to the kettle to start the tea. Alright, you lovesick dolt. You want to know why exactly your magic's been stuck like that? It's because you don't have an outlet for all those emotions. Instead, you keep bottling them up. Literally, I guess. It's all that comes out because it's all there is inside you. So, let it all out. What? You think I'm going to judge you? No, I, I don't know. Would you rather spill it all to him instead? I can't. It's too much. Tell it to me, a neutral third party. Actually, I can't say that I'm neutral. I need to find a new supplier if you couldn't fill my orders anymore. I do feel a little more at ease imagining this is all business for you. I just think of it like that. Astragalus pours their tea and returns to her seat with two mugs in hand. With a heavy sigh, Periwinkle finally relents and begins his story. I told her everything I could think of, my first impressions of him, how he continuously subverted my expectations, my mistakes, appearing where I shouldn't have, then going into a desperate spiral as I tried to rid myself of the guilt over it, how he was the one to apologize afterward. Our date that day was so, so wonderful, but which also laid bare the feelings I was too afraid to acknowledge. I latched onto any alternative explanation I could in order to escape them. The moment I could finally admit to myself all the ways he changed my life for the better. How we grew closer and closer, while I held those feelings tight in my chest. I told her how he had finally worked up the courage to introduce me to his friends. How his hand trembled in mine as we walked out the door together. His point of contention, a far-off goal I had decided would have, been, would have to be met before advancing. Everything up to the state I'm in now, useless, paralyzed, and sobbing. Astragalus listened patiently through all of it. She asked questions from time to time, clarification on the time frame, certain details. Her reaffirming comments offered such comfort, such relief to this pain, I'd kept confined to my own heart, until finally I had nothing left to say. Astragalus sits back in her chair and heaves a sigh. So, how are you feeling? There's a certain clarity in laying it all out at once, but I still don't know what I could even what I can do to push things forward. Could I even handle the rejection? He won't reject you. What makes you so certain? That boy's madly in love with you. Why else would he devote all the time and energy to making you happy? Because I'm great in bed, obviously. <laughs> nice. Quit deflecting. You know that's not all it is. I don't want to leave any room for doubt. If I were to confess now it didn't go well, I'd, I'd be destroyed beyond repair. That's why, if I'm going to say it, I want it to be a sure thing. Life ain't about sure things. Even so, I'm going to wait for the opportune moment before exposing my vulnerable heart. 
as long as you've got a plan. Astro Gallus le leans down to pick up Periwinkle's empty mug, then holds it out in front of him. Try your magic again. Whatever scent you want, just pour it right in the cup. Periwinkle nervously draws his wand, holds it out to the cup, then closes his eyes and taps. Is it... Chamomile? It isn't Peach? I'm cured! Yeah, dumbass. Did you forget that this is an apothecary? Uh, it is, isn't it? Next time you've got a problem with your magic, don't go. Don't sit around crying about it on your own. Come straight to me and I'll fix you up. Thank you. I'm truly glad that we're friends. I would be lost without you. Business associates, don't forget I've got loads of orders for you now that you're back to normal. I'll go home and fill them right away. But first, may I hug you? Not a chance. <laughs> it was worth a shot. You'll accept my platonic affection one day. Yeah, yeah. Get out of my office, Periwinkle. Oh, that's pretty cute. Pair eggs at the back rooms. <laughs> the back room. Not the back rooms. No! They only make it a few steps before Periwinkle turns on her heel. Turns on his heel. Ah, uh, one more thing before I go. Hmm? What's up? I've been curious to ask. The last time I was here, you told me that magic can be interpreted as a judge of one's character. Oh, right. When I changed my mind about Pastel. Yes, precisely. It's rather impressive that you could see through his, to his true nature, despite having only just met. Sure, but he was pretty easy to read. Don't be too impressed. Well? Well, what? What does my magic say about me? I'm dying to know. Your magic was always li lively and carefree. Compassionate, too, like Bastille's. How can you possibly read something like carefree from perfume? Hey, I'm just telling you the vibes I've gotten over the years. Your aromas prioritize pleasure. There was definitely a hint of loneliness in them, too. Alright, now I know you're making things up. I always had someone to keep me company. Just because you've always got someone around doesn't mean you can't be lonely. I suppose someone like you would know a thing or two about loneliness, hmm? I'm not lonely at all. In fact, I prefer to be alone. You, on the other hand, can't, eat, can't stand it even for a second. That's why you always run off chasing someone to fill the void. Well, that certainly isn't true. The peach stuff you gave me earlier was pure loneliness. It was crying out like, please, Pastille, never leave me. This isn't fun anymore. Forget that I asked. Sorry, couldn't it resist? I suppose you're right, though. I haven't been able to tell him that in words. I can't keep holding back. Yes to no, no matter the outcome. Good luck, okay? I'm sure it'll turn out just fine. Yes, yes, it likely will. Thank you again. I'm truly grateful for all that you've done for me. Astragalus waves him off, and Periwinkle leaves the apothecary with new resolve. I would date Pastille if he was real. No homo. Same. No homo, chat. Spent the next several days catching him on my work. Magic truly does come so easily with a clear mind. If only I'd swallowed my pride sooner. Completed batch after batch, almost effortlessly going down the long checklist Astragalus had given me. Hadn't even felt tired by the end of it, as if all this energy had been stored up inside me all along. It was a relief to have returned to somewhat normalcy. Normalcy. I don't know how to say that word. Thinking of Pastel no longer caused my heart to ache. At least, not enough to put me in a, total, a state of total despondence. Instead, those thoughts served as motivation. The way forward was clear. I'd tell him how I felt, and surely... Surely things would turn out just fine. Following night, Pastille shows up on Periwinkle's doorstep. Get dressed, I want to take you somewhere. Oh, and where exactly am I being whisked away to? You'll see. We're comfortable shoes, okay? How mysterious. Mm hmm. Very well, I'll be ready momentarily. This is it. The dramatic confession scene is upon us. I have to look my best, for good luck, of course. And for competence. <laughs> You already know, chat, that the that the best look we've got is just the same look the entire game. <laughs> I have to keep doing it, okay? Hand in hand, the pair make their way to the train station. Mm hmm. Had he been planning something while I was sequestered away with my work? Bastille is always so full of surprises. How positively delightful. I hope I didn't interrupt any plans you had for the night. Oh, none at all. It was about time I got out of the house again. I've actually had a very productive past several days, you know, toiling way over my perfumes. Haha, <laughs> I, I thought that might be the case since you hadn't dropped by in a while. Did you miss me? W well, Periwinkle hugs Pastel's arm tightly as they continue their walk. I missed you too. 
Astil and I step off the train. We're greeted by grassy fields and a sky full of luminous stars. Just where has he taken me? A trail of lanterns lights the long path forward. Astil takes the lead. Ugh. Yo, hydrate and the posture check? YouTube, YouTube? It's a, l it's a bit of a walk from here, but I promise it'll be worth it. A long walk, hmm? Can we take a ride on your broom together? Nah, it did defeat the purpose. It'd feel more rewarding getting there on foot. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Tragic, though, that you'd willingly pass on an opportunity for me to cling to you. Haha. <laughs> you can fly on the way back if you want. I still offers his hand again. Periwinkle takes with a smile. Tell me more about your relationship with magic. Hmm? What do you mean? It's the same when we clean my house together. You insist on doing things manually. Not that I mind it at all. Seeing you lift so many heavy things was a treat in itself. Haha, <laughs> well, ever since I was young, it was clear I was, um, ridiculously talented, as they put it. My moms wanted me to be, my moms wanted me to be a traditional witch. They enrolled me in one of the top schools so I could learn from the best. It was an all-girls school, though, but I guess I was young enough that no one realized I was a boy. I really didn't belong there on any level. But I kept it as long as I could, just enough to keep my parents happy until I could go out and live on my own. <laughs> I still don't exa ex understand exactly why, but I always felt uncomfortable using my magic. Felt like cheating. Like, this kind of power shouldn't come so easily. So I thought so too. I guess that's why I latched onto her when we met. She used to really hate magic, which worked out perfectly for me. It was a good excuse to pretend to be a regular human like her. So that's what I did for the past seven years? Seven years? That's quite a long time. Yeah, but there was a lot of it to distract me back then. It took a while to get Tellier's sweets up and running. And Sai did eventually find out. I thought she disowned me when she did. But instead, she told me I wouldn't, I shouldn't have to hit it. Even though I doubt we would have become friends if I told her from the beginning. Quite impossible to please, hmm. You have no idea. But ever since she said that, I've been, on, it, I've been able to start embracing magic again. On my own terms. And being in the grass why he values her so highly. Um, sorry that I just keep talking about myself. Don't apologize, I'm the one who asked. Besides, I'm content to listen. Say as much as you like. Thanks. Periwinkle gives Pastille's hand a reassuring squeeze. I love him. I have to find the right moment to tell him that. Should it be now? During this romantic walk? Uh, but he still has yet to reveal our destination. What do you have in store for me, Pastille? I think I might be I might be too used to how Sai is. She's usually so preoccupied with her own stuff. So it's nice, having someone who actually wants to listen to me. Ugh, that makes her sound like such a horrible friend. She's really not. You certainly haven't made a convincing case for her. Hey, she sounds like a decent friend. <laughs> a little stubborn, but sounds like a decent friend. Ah, I know, but that wasn't the point I was trying to make. Oh, I really... Yes? Let me start over. But it still takes a deep breath before continuing. Going back to what we were talking about before with my magic and everything. I think I have trouble accepting myself for what I am. I tend to hide things even when I don't need to. Being with you feels like it's better not to hide. Like I'm allowed to just be. We're like celebrated for being. I I don't know. That feels weird to say. Y you can stop me if I'm being too much. It's because I love you. Why can't I just say that? Oh, we're here. W we are. Ugh, I'm just doing a stretch. We came up over the hill. The vastness of the night sky overwhelmed me. But more than that. Feel the small blue flowers that stretched as far as the eye could see, matched so perfectly. Pastille. They're periwinkles, and I looked up where to find some. I found out about this place. Uh, apparently, it's a famous date spot. I thought you'd like to see it, so... I... 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 I shouldn't have told you. I'm weak to romance, Pastille. A glint catches Periwinkle's eye, and he looks up to notice a meteor shower has begun. Ah. Oh good, it started just in time. You planned this too? Well, I knew this was supposed to be happening tonight, so... Pastille. Wah. Wah. Periwinkle tackles Pastille to the ground, landing them in the field of flowers. Nice. This is perfect. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm speechless. Haha. <laughs> I guess I went a little overboard. A little? This is the most romantic thing anyone's ever done for me. He buries his face in Pastille's chest, holding him close. Well, there's actually one more thing I wanted to say. Feel Pastille's heart pounding. Uh, where do I start? Um, you know how Psy and Gumdrop are really important to me? I always thought that I needed to keep myself available for them, take care of the store and everything. But in practice, that just meant I never really took any time for myself. 
Like, my own needs were something I could just bury and it would be fine, because it's for their sake. I guess that's part of why I'd go out with random guys in secret. Something just for me, totally detached from everything else. I tried having a rela real relationship once. It didn't work out, obviously. I, I never told Sai about him. But that made me think that I was right to continue on the way I'd been, since I wasn't willing to let my priorities shift. Periwinkle grips Pastel's cloak a little tighter. What are you saying? I guess I'm that with you, I don't mind it as much. It's gonna beat me to it at this rate. I can't let that happen. Yeah, we're the Dom. Periwinkle suddenly rolls himself on top of Pastel, pinning him down. Pastel, I'm in love with you. What? what? Since when? <laughs> are you seriously asking since when? I, I don't know, maybe this whole time? I only admitted it to myself that morning you made me pancakes. That's what it took? Pancakes, chat. Pancakes, there you go. Why? How long have you felt this way? Since having to carry you home after spending the day together, I think that's when I first realized it. Why didn't you say something? I've been suffering in silence this entire time. I, I thought you wanted to keep it casual. We saw each other almost every day. How is that casual? But you never acted any differently. I, I was busy sorting through my own feelings anyway. Mm. So was I. That's no excuse for how long you kept me waiting. I, I won't forgive you. But what? Why are you smiling like that? It's cute, seeing you all worked up like this. Periwinkle struggles to his feet and begins stomping away. You, you could have saved me a lot of heartache, you know. Pastel sits up, straightening out his cloak and retrieving his hat. Where are you going? Come back. No, I'm too upset. Perry. I was convinced, convinced that I cursed myself with some kind of love potion. My fake aphrodisiac turned we real. What in the world? That was such a half-assed moan. I know, because I, I didn't want to do it. I, I knew what would happen if I did, did it. <laughs> because we didn't fuck that day. Fucking was supposed to be an entire point of it. But Perry! Everything spiraled out of control since then, and I couldn't stop thinking about you. You broke my magic for weeks and weeks, and all I could conjure was that stupid peach blossom scent. Uh, really? Yes, until just the other day, which I spent crying in the dusty back room of the apothecary, telling Astra Gallus all about it. After all that, everything I spent so long preparing my heart for, you have the nerve to try to confess first? I'm sorry. Don't apologize, I already said I won't forgive you. What do you want me to do then? I don't know, fucking kiss me if you love me so much? Yeah, nerd. Pastel approaches gently, raising a hand to Periwinkle's cheek. It does exactly as he's told. I love you. Periwinkle's heart skips a beat. I love you too. He hugs Pastel tightly, careful not to knock him over this time. It takes everything I've got to keep myself from bursting into tears. I won't ruin my makeup on this perfect date. This beautiful place that Pastel chose just for us. I can have my memory of this perfect night obscured by tears. It took, it looks like the meteor shower is over. Take me home. Are you still mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I've never seen you like this. I don't know how else I should interpret it. I'm overwhelmed, elated, relieved, and frustrated. I want to get in bed so that you can hold me close all night. I don't think I'll be convinced that this was real unless you do that, so please? That sounds really nice. Okay, if it's to convince you, I guess I have no choice. Heart. Heart. That was cute. You look so pretty <laughs> in pink. Ah! Stretching. Against the starry night stars. Without you, my heart would sink. So I am telling you why. <sighs> Our world has to move. That was a good stretch. And with that, we have to make do. W game. But I don't want this is a long, a, a bit longer. What, like three hours and like a couple minutes? Not gonna lie, I thought it was I thought it was like I'm pretty sure the store page said it was at half an hour. You look so pretty and <laughs> This is a good song. It's cute. Love the game. Thoughts, chat? Thought? I thought it was really cute, really wholesome. Ba -ba -ba. <sighs> yeah, it was really cute, actually. So now you know. And here we go. My love, my dear, my sweet. You look so pretty. 
pretty interesting. But I really like that ending song though. That was actually really good. Short, but thank you for reading Starry Flowers, a beautiful memoir detailing my first experience with true love. As a reward for finishing the story, you may now access the extra scenes and bonus chapters along with lovely image gallery. M memoir, Perry, how detailed is this? Don't worry, my sweet. I've kindly skipped over all the sex scenes, so you have nothing to be embarrassed about. Th the stuff leading up to those is still embarrassing. How much do you leave in? Oh, it doesn't matter. This isn't canon. Merely an excuse to speak directly to the reader. It will never reveal such private details about you, such as your fetishes, without your explicit consent. Ah! Ah! That's enough ending scene! Please enjoy the bonus material. Thanks again. Bonus material. What do you mean bonus material? Okay, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say... We're not watching the bonus material chat. I don't have time. I didn't... I didn't, uh... I didn't think I had this much time. I didn't... I just didn't think that this game would be that long, so... If you want to see the rest, maybe maybe if this video hits like 100 likes, we'll check out the rest of the game. Um, Nom Nom Nami uh, makes more, by the way. Makes more games, more cute uh, LGBT friendly games um, and stuff like that. <laughs> I actually don't have time, chat. I don't have time. I just wanted to finish the game. Um, maybe next stream we'll play the rest. But for now, I think we'll leave it here. That was good. I really liked Starry Flowers. It was, it was a very interesting story. Obviously, it was pure visual novel. No choices, anything. Um, maybe, maybe. I, I think I'll upload it first, and then we'll see how well the video does to see if it's war warranted to make another video for the bonus chapters and stuff. But for now, I'm leaving it here for the, just the base story. Um, I liked it a lot. It was good. Tell me what you guys like. Tell me if you relate to those things. Uh, I can I could definitely see relating to a couple of those things. It was a long time before I could tell my uh, uh, my girlfriend at the time that I loved her. <laughs> it was super cringe, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's funny because she didn't even say it back. Not in a bad way. Just it's like <laughs> not in a bad way. It's just that's what happened. <laughs> um, I literally uh, like I'm pretty sure I had hung out with her at her house and I uh, didn't drive a car or anything at the time so I walked home and I lived like an hour away and it's like midnight and I walked home and and it was like <laughs> and uh and it was raining it was raining I was soaking wet and I had this present for her yeah that's what it was I had a present for her and I forgot to fucking give it to her so I I ran to my house got the present and I ran an hour to her house, middle of the night, mind you. I text her. I'm like, hey, I'm coming back. I, I forgot to give you something. I'm running in the middle of the rain. <laughs> yeah, I was wet. And uh, I'm running in the middle of the rain. And I thought to myself while doing this run, I was like, why did I do this? Why didn't I just wait until I saw her next time? And I realized, oh, because I probably love this girl. <laughs> So I was like, maybe I should say something. <laughs> when I got there, I said it. <laughs> uh, kind of cringe, but... Um, <laughs> and she didn't even say it back. It was really nice. You know, it was <laughs> really embarrassing. Um, but I let it out. I let it, I let it out. Um, it worked out. I got the I love you back later on when she figured out her feelings. But uh, <laughs> that's what happened. Where do I find these games? I get them on itch.io. You can just look up Nom Nom Nami, though, and their, their links will come up soon. That's a thing. Um, anyways, I, I, I really relate to that kind of like not knowing what you're at kind of like, are you dating? Are you boyfriend, girlfriend? Very similar to boyfriend, girlfriend. I dated my girlfriend. I'd gone on dates with her for like a while before I finally like before something big happened. And then I was like, hey, do you want to be my girlfriend? And she was like, what the fuck was I up to this point? <laughs> It's like, oh, I thought you just taking pity on me, hanging out, you know, take pity on me. <laughs> um, chat, this is this is not a part of the YouTube video, so, you know, I keep this. This is just between me and you, Twitch chat, okay? So don't don't share it with anyone. There, the games are free. Yeah, I think they do have NSFW stuff, but it, you have to pay for it. So yeah, yeah. Yikes. Anyways. Anyway, sorry, I had a little story time. I just thought it'd be interesting to throw that in. Um, anyways. 
thanks for watching everybody if you enjoyed this by the way this is a clock if you didn't know from the beginning of this whole video it's been clock talking on clock nice to meet you um have a good one if you enjoyed this game i play a lot of visual novels uh femboy games horror games a lot of horror games uh, and just a variety of games on the channel. Definitely subscribe and check it out. I'm sure you'll find more stuff you like. Um, if you like this at all, we have more games just like this. And uh, yeah, leave a like. It helps me out a lot. And have a good one, everybody. It's Clock, okay? See you next time. Peace.